it's a bit of a dreig day in the Highlands. But that's okay, because Sam and I are getting to hang out inside tonight. We're getting to hang out with Phil and Simon Thompson. This is not the distillery. Where are we, sir? We're at the uh, Dornoth uh, Castle Hotel. Show and us in. All right, sure, no problem. A fantastic the Dornoth Whiskey Bar. Here we go. They've got a spring bank or two. Yeah. Or two, <laughs> for sure. And look at this. I don't know how much of this we're going to get a chance to sample tonight. Hopefully all of it. We're only here <laughs> for one night. A wee bit later this evening, we'll give you a look at the distillery. But for now, get comfy. We're going to enjoy the Donut Castle Hotel. See you soon, guys. Bye. Hello whiskey folk, hello everyone, welcome to the V-Pub, welcome to Thursday night, welcome to a very different backdrop, welcome to a very different environment, please put your, <laughs> keep your fingers crossed, keep your toes crossed, everything that the tech gods shine kindly on us tonight, we've had a few problems setting up today as we always do when we try and do the V-Pub live on location, please tell me in the comments, tell me that you uh, can hear me and that you can see me and everything is working okay because it's fabulous to welcome you here hope your thursday night is doing very very well we've sevi and i traveled up earlier today we've had a fantastic thursday it's been all too easy to get distracted as we drive up the a9 into the highlands and obviously pass all of those kind of uh, distillery locations we come up through inverness and then on to tain of course and past glenmorangie and balblair and all of those spots and eventually find ourselves here about an hour north of inverness at dornock uh, quite a trek, just over four hours of drive from Glasgow to what is quite clearly, demonstrably, uh, objectively, the smallest distillery in Scotland right now. Certainly the smallest that you can buy any liquid from. It's quite incredible. To witness how small things are here, I'm going to try and give you a sense of just how small things are, but the actual experience is much, much bigger than that. The distillery itself is tiny. I will show you just how tiny, as best I can tonight, I'll show you just how tiny the distillery is. You know, the bottle shop is not very big either. The bonded warehouse is probably the smallest bonded warehouse I've ever stepped foot in to. But the whole experience is made much, much bigger by an absolutely fantastic whiskey bar with just an eye-popping selection of whiskies at ridiculously fair prices, a very welcoming staff, knowledgeable staff. It's all kind of fortified by this ancient, ancient building, the Dornock Castle Hotel. And that's where I'm coming to you live from tonight. I'm actually in what they call the dungeon. And I kind of thought that would be a tongue-in-cheek name for this place. I thought it would be just something, a room that they call the dungeon, but no, you can see we've got really low vaulted ceilings. We've got iron bars on the doors and we've got a timber door that if they closed and locked it, I don't think I would ever be getting out of it very easily. So we're genuinely coming to you live from the Dornock Castle Hotel dungeon tonight. Phil and Simon is going to, are going to join us a wee bit later. Um, and we've also got Sevi traveling, or roadie and uh, my shotgun hero, uh, uh, who's been helping me set up today as well, so we'll get a chance to hang out with the Alchemist a wee bit later tonight. But before we get into all of that, of course, I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to reach out to you, and I'm going to welcome in all of you beautiful whiskey folk and dedicated barflies as you settle in, put your feet up, pour a dram, whatever you're doing, let me know how you are. Let me know that you can hear me. I can see Yuri saying, uh, good evening, Roy, all sound and video fine. Looking forward to tonight's VPUB, Yuri. It's fantastic to welcome you in. As always, as Yuri's just done there, I'll be trying to pick up the orange. So if you're trying to get that attention, type Aquavite or at Aquavite. And hopefully we can get a wee bit of interaction from you guys tonight as well. Donald Pass Whiskey, Tim is here. Good to see you, buddy. Saints be praised. That looks like a pretty good signal 
Fingers crossed, Tim. Let's keep it strong. Jimmy Jazz is saying good evening. Uh, Aquaviti and Sevi. Sevi is here in the background. He's sitting in the green room right now, buddy. Uh, brilliant to see you, and Jimmy. Uh, fantastic that you always join us, despite the fact you're on East Coast US time. Gerben Bl Blocker from the Netherlands is here. My friend, good to see you. Will I see you in Limburg in a couple of weeks' time? That would be amazing if I get to catch up with you and raise a glass for you there. Lee J. Brown from Wiltshire is here saying sound and video is great, very clear. Fantastic, Lee J. Let's hope it stays like that for the night. Jeff Whiskey, good to see you, buddy. Saying that was quick change of clothes. Showbiz life is coming back. That's right, the wee, the wee intro there. It was also, you'll notice it was daylight when we recorded that a wee bit earlier, but it was absolutely teeming down with rain. I wanted to go out and give you a shot of the hotel from outside on the road, but the rain was bouncing, so we and Sevy and I just stayed in, uh, stayed a wee bit hidden. Max Greitner is here from Austria. Good evening, Roy. Great to see you in location again. Uh, give Sevi a hug from me. I did. I gave Sevi a big hug when I saw him this morning before we made our way up the road. I'll give him another one from Max in Austria. Cheers. Good to see you, buddy. And Ryan Sullivan, that's uh, our, our pal from Eight Doors, which is just a wee bit up the road from here, another couple of hours north. Uh, he's saying, even Roy Acuviti, I see you've found the Dornick Caves. I have, Ryan. I wonder if you've experienced the same spot. Whiskey Weekend Dram, good to see you, Harrow. He's saying, no doorknock on the table. Maybe I pop the shop when I visit there in two weeks' time. There's there's definitely doorknock on the shop shelves here. So if you are coming to the source, you will be able to take home some souvenirs, buddy. Nice to welcome you, my friend. Andrew Butler is here. Ask him how many, sorry, how my Whiskey Club shelf bottle is doing and get them to pour both of you a dram if there's enough left. Andrew Butler's shouting in drams from afar. Fantastic call. Chris Bollack is saying video and audio okay. Thanks, Chris. Good to see you, buddy. James Burgoyne is saying all good, Roy. Scott Allen is saying hello, Roy. All looks and sounds good. That's the magic we want to hear because it's been a wee bit of a stressful day trying to set it up. Scott Allen is saying hello, Roy. All looks and sounds good. Audio and video good here, says Mike Molasses. James Scott, Mal uh, Mike Molasses, Skerbin Blocker. So good to see you all. Drew from Arizona is in. Loud and clear, buddy. Fantastic stuff. Going to skip down and catch up with more, some more recent comments. Uh, Danny Hebbington is saying good evening, Roy. Looking forward to this one. Me too, Danny. Good to see you in. And Orange Rule, that's Rule Chisholm. Good to see you, buddy. Seen evening, Roy. Enjoy the great wee tune of Dornick. Uh, we didn't have much chance to do any sightseeing today. Maybe that's the plan for tomorrow, buddy. Kevin Grant on Whiskey. Good to see you, cousin Kevin. He's saying good to finally make a live. Been missing them lately. Hope to catch up soon for a drama or two. I am missing you. Come round the V-Pub and help me drain some of that liquid. The shelves are starting to sag, big guy. I need your help. Good to see you, buddy. Congrats on the recent role as well with Tomatin. I look forward to seeing you over a festival table soon. Alistair Gray is saying, evening, sir. Uh, make sure to try that Inver Gordon, 34-year-old. So we've got some local intelligence coming in here from Alistair Gray, tipping us off to a wee uh, grain whiskey. Tom Franey saying, evening. What a place to be locked in. That's right. We've already been getting spoiled, my friend, and it's been pretty good. Rick Johnson saying, good afternoon from San Francisco, Roy. Uh, the dungeon looks like a great V-Pub backdrop a fine place to be trapped. Now, hopefully, I'm only going to be trapped till the end of the VPUB tonight. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run right straight into things. Um, I'm going to try, I've got a wee, couple of wee silly video clips just to give you a sense of the distillery itself and just how absolutely tiny it is. And we'll just get straight into the reason that I'm doing this VPUB live on location is that I'd reached out to Phil and Simon originally in Limburg to do something. Eventually, through our mutual pal Connell, we had a, a bit of a chat and we got it sorted out. But I realized as I was speaking to them that the reason I wanted them on the VPUB was probably not to support me on a topic for the VPUB, but to talk about their story because not only is it quite a compelling story, but it's quite a unique story. There's not many people that come into whiskey the way that Phil and Simon came into whiskey a couple of decades ago. Some of us, most of us, I would say, have a coach or a moment, some kind of springboard or something that happens. Maybe it's a distillery tour or a friend or some kind of guide that hooks us in whiskey and brings us in. For these guys, it was a, bit, a little bit different. They had whiskey available to them because they were in hospitality. As hoteliers, they had whiskey on the bar. And through their own curiosity, at a very tender age, they started exploring and making their own way through whiskey. Obviously, that's changed a lot since. And so to bring them from those early, early days, to bring us all the story from those early days to where we find Phil and Simon Thompson now, I think is going to be an interesting story. From a tiny, tiny footprint here in Sutherland, they've managed to make a name for themselves in whiskey that reaches right across the globe, whether that's through their independent bottling label or through their distilling 
here at Donock Distillery. And they've already got future plans that we haven't even been able to touch on. We'll do it live and fresh for you tonight to find out what's happening with our expansion plans for the new distillery, see if there's anything they can share with us there. It's quite an amazing thing, especially the quickening of all that activity over the last 10 years. So we'll get the story from them. I've got some kind of fun little prompts. I want to nudge them and push them on things. So we'll get their opinion and takes on a few things. Uh, we'll maybe get Sevi involved a wee bit later. And then, of course, everybody will gather for a wee bit of a special kind of not entirely Dornock themed quiz at the end, but there will be some home advantage questions in there for the guys at the end. That's how we're going to run tonight. I hope you're looking forward to it. Des is celebrating being a member of the Barflies for 48 months. Des, thank you very much for your support. Even the Barflies is saying great venue. It absolutely is, buddy. It's fantastic. It's to see in the flesh too. And David Hong has bought me a dram uh, from the States. Uh, no comment or anything, David. Just a generous wee dram. Uh, thanks to Des and thanks to David Hong. Thanks to you both and welcome into the V-Pub. Fantastic to see you. Okay, I'm going to drop this video in now. Because it's, it's the best way I think I've got um, from given the fixed position that we're in just now to just to give you a concept or an idea of what a small distillery actually is. Let's have a look at this. Here we have the stills at Dornock Distillery. But I'm going to go around the rest of the distillery now and I'm going to give you a full 360 degree tour. When we talk about small scale distilling, there's a mash tun, there's two of the washbacks, and the rest of the washbacks live up there. That is Dornock Distillery. I hope you enjoyed the tour today. Let's go and speak to the guys behind this operation. And those wash bags that you saw from downstairs, or you, we tried to see from downstairs, <laughs> that's fell in the background. Here we are. This is the other four wash bags. When we talk about efficiency, right, and efficient use of space, it's quite incredible. But it's also interesting in how utterly independent it makes them. Not only is this also just such a small form factor but if you see the bottle shop it's tiny if you see if you see the bonded warehouse it's probably one of the smallest bonded warehouses you've ever seen and then you come in here into the distillery and it's just it's just incredibly small i don't know how you measure scotland's smallest distillery but if it comes down to square footage of real estate in order to make whiskey to me this is scotland's smallest distillery Signs for a beep. Okay, sorry. Oh, oh, here we go. Gotcha. <laughs> Too busy chatting. Welcome. Thanks, nice to have you. Nice to have you. We've got Phil and Simon Thompson. We've been, it's literally last minute, so we're literally pouring each other water and drams and things like that. We've just managed to squeeze in some dinner and get things together. I'm glad that it's come together and it looks like we are coming in with a decent signal and stuff like that. Thank you very much for your warm welcome. Thanks, sir. Coming. I made a tongue-in-cheek joke to you a wee bit earlier when you were giving me that tour around the distillery. Everybody's been able to see. I was literally able to tour just by turning the camera around and standing on the spot. But I asked you, you know, does anyone ever phone up to kind of book a tour? We've got a very pre-defined idea of what a distillery looks like and what a distillery tour looks like. You know, we arrive in a visitor centre, we're welcomed, we gather, we get shown around and we go through the process in a fairly linear fashion. We eventually get, maybe we get some nice drums at the end mm -hmm. and we buy something in the shop and we leave. Things are a wee bit different here. Yeah, we've, we've never been open to the public officially. Uh, although you know, we're, on, we're on the street and if we're in production, all the doors are wide open and you can pretty much see most of what goes on from just walking up to the door. Have an old chin. But it's, um, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll get contacted by industry guys, clubs, etc. and we'll, we'll arrange that. But we've never offered tours. Uh, you know, at some point we'll maybe polish things a little bit, get a bit organised and do something a little bit more formal. But so far it's been very informal and it's really down to who's working how busy they are and what time of day if you just like turn up at the door 
Um, so yeah. So you're just as likely to be told not today as you are to be, I come and have a wee look or yeah. something like that. But yeah. I think once people see the place, even if they were to just drive up and have a look at the place, they would get it immediately. I spoke in the intro there about the idea, the concept of you guys didn't really have anybody guiding you or bringing you into whiskey. You had a curiosity to what was hanging on the shelves behind you, the bar here and the hotel that your parents ran. Mm. Yeah. That's your introduction into whiskey. So in an executive summary, how do we go from you just stealing whiskey from behind the bar to training distilling training yeah. to your own independent um okay after all your training all your very very compressed whiskey journey and to your own independent bottling brand distilling but not just distilling on the tiny little footprint distillery that i shared with everyone there but plans to potentially increase the scale of your distilling by a factor of about 10 or so maybe more by the time um we'll talk about the new distillery i think that's the, probably the final point in this little summary we have to do how did it start? Who was first? Phil or Simon? Who was the first one to crack open a bottle? That's, that's what the, was it? The who came question, first? Who came right. first? Yeah. Which Thompson came first? And, uh, it's probably you, I think. You're, I probably started you know. taking it more seriously earlier than you did. Simon was quite a famous, uh, it was really strange in the early days, and you, you, you were a famous Edward Hour collector. Oh yeah, um, way, way, way back. The only Twins person Edward Hour. Yeah, I did, I, did, I did a big collection of Edward Hour. Yeah. Yeah. In his bathroom, in the soap cabinet, you know, it's like... So this is, the, what, what would this have been? That there's not a lot of official Edward Dower to collect. Oh, no, they're, they're straight from the cast. Yeah, right? the lead uh, boxes had, with all I the wine cast. Uh, every, different coloured box. I had every, every single one of those, first version, plus doubles of most of them, plus the export exclusives. Yeah, oh. I, I don't... I so don't, you, would, you would have the good, the sublime, and the... The, often, was, and the interesting. Yeah, how did you end up with that anyway? It, it was it was a bit of a it's it was a bit of an education piece because we worked our way through the the doubles and there's all these you know at the time all these different cask types that you'd never tried before, and I found that interesting working from the baseline of Edridger and then you know trying Chateauneuf de Pape or trying uh, Caribbean rum casks and there was a whole range of weird casks in that series. I think there was like fifteen or sixteen different cast types. Um and that was quite a good little education working through all of those. And then I kept wow. one yeah, set yeah, one yeah, set yeah. as a kind of as a, as a completionist thing. I had the completionist bug for a little while where you know I had a very, very large Bal Blair collection for a while. I eventually gave up being a completionist. Your local distillery, yeah, 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 yeah. Bal Blair. I, we've still got uh, a bottle so, we've still got a bottle on display at the distillery that I've kind of forgotten about. We need to go and figure that out before you know people move change. on staff change <laughs> and then they're like oh maybe we can open this for a tasting but, yeah. Um, uh, yeah uh but yeah we sort of eventually lost the completionist bug but yeah what, that, no, so what age what age are you collecting all these straight from the cascade what are you talking about very uh probably 21 i would think 20, yeah that, that would there. be about right so we're, we're two decades ago more or less don't worry yeah, pretty much sure. but, yeah, yeah round about that order yeah you're so you're already you're fast tracking because you're on a single distillery, you're on a single malt dist distillate and trying it through all the different cask variations that it's going through, yeah. right? And that time it would have been pretty small production and they were still kind of experimenting down at Edredour back in those years as well. Yeah. So you would have been seen some quite, maybe not, I don't want to say inconsistency, but some a lot of variation and batch variation in the product, right? So that's already, it's a pretty, it's a pretty dense spirit to, to start on, mm. is it not? Yeah, um, I think that's more like a start of a collection focus when I got bit by the collector's bug for a while. But you know, it really started in the the old bar here, which was actually directly above us. Um, you know, hospitality staff come, staff go, and all of a sudden you find sure. yourself running the whiskey bar, doing the purchases, and you're like, oh, right, tasting things, right, what am I going to order this week? I really enjoyed that, we'll get more of that. Let's change this up. I've never tried this distillery. So we got that really early advantage where we were ordering the whiskey between me and Phil based on what we were interested in trying next slash what we really liked. And, you know, what when we came here 20-something years ago, there was already a fairly solid but small sure. selection of whiskey that kind of got started. And I think a few of them were like, yes, you know, we, we like whiskey prior, but, uh, you know, I think recognised like, there was a quality difference yeah, in some of them. I think, I think for you, it was the, 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 was it the Macallan 25 anniversary yeah, vault that, that was still 
was Sorry, in, in 1975, McAllen, 25. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> right, we all have we, we all have gateway whiskeys, Phil, but... Gateway, aye, that's that's it. It. Yeah, no, it was... Um, so the bar was above us, and I always remember, like, polishing glasses and stuff when you're sort of 15, 16 years old. Yeah, 18, 18 years old, 18, 18, 18 years old. Sorry, yes, yes, you're Legal right. Legal drinking age in the UK, um, yes, of course. Um, so, yeah, polishing glasses and, you know, person you're working with is, like, constantly out on having cigarette breaks and not really doing any work, and you don't quite know what to do, so you just start serving people and learning how to pour pints and all that kind of stuff. But we always remember there was a 75... McCallum 25 um, anniversary malt in the bar, and that was like the prize bottle. And I always remember having a taste of it and recognizing that it was vastly better. And that was my really, you know, crude term for it. It was vastly better than everything else in the bar. Oh, yeah. No idea yeah. why or what it was. And then after that, for me, it kind of dropped off for a while. And then as we come back from work during holidays, um, as Simon said, you were ordering, you were kind of having to understand it because you had people coming to the bar from all over the world who were like, I'm in Scotland, I want to try whiskey, tell me about some whiskey. And you just kind of threw the set uh-huh. and we have Glen Orangey, we have Bob Blair, and just talked them through the kind of local distilleries. And then from there, I always remember the thing for me behind the bar was just opening and smelling everything. As soon as you, before you pour it, have a smell, before you pour it, have a smell. That was a really good way to kind of gain a Building of, your own life. Yeah, kind yeah. of repertoire yeah. and reference points. And that, and then while, while you're buying, you know, there's a slippery slope because you're buying for the bar, but while you're also putting trade orders on with, you know, better pricing um, than, than retail, you're like, okay, well, order something for myself as well. I need to pay for this one separately. And yeah, that's kind of, that was a bit of a, a start to it. I think as well, when we were ordering on trade, it was a lot, it was from Gordon, Mc, well, it was Gordon McPhail. There wasn't really anyone sure. else at that point, or there was retail. Not just for GM stock, but, but lots of other things. Third party stuff, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They have all sorts of things. And the prices were just like, we look back at it now, and I actually still have some old Gordon McPhail price lists, and it's just amazing. Like, you look at it now, and you're like, Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. But yeah. you always remember at the time being like, oh, 200 quid for a 50 year old whiskey. Don't know about that, guys. Well, that, yeah. was, that was much later on. You know, yeah. Like, you know, we're buying 50 uh, year old GM bottlings for like one, 120 trade, yeah. that kind of ballpark. Yeah. Uh, this, so this genuinely was back in the day where whiskey was arguably undersold, of course. Yeah. Undiscovered, yeah, undersold. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you had a, you know, you had a, a bottle, you know, you had like a 50 year old Glen Grant or something that was 12 pounds a measure. And people would be going, yeah, yeah. people would people be think, thinking twice about that. Um, yeah. you, know, wasn't like, you know, it's the usual when you're in the bar and they're like, that must be the bottle price, is it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> much, I know, crazy, crazy days now. I mean, if we see, if we see a dram for 12 pounds nowadays, it's like, oh, that's, that's, that's an yeah. expensive, that's an, an affordable. A wee dram in, in early from Daniel Williams. Thanks, buddy. Oh. Daniel Williams over there. As he's saying, this distillery is bigger than clay in Rotterdam. We've got a couple of clay bottles. I think maybe we should have bought one. I've got, yeah, got, yeah, got, yeah. got one in the band. Yeah, of course cool. they have. Of course they have. Mm-hmm. Uh, remember uh, to make Roy and the boys smile by liking and subscribing. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you very much for your kind ones. Uh, celebrating oh. being members of the Barflies for 12 months and 49 months. Wow. Sugar Kitty for 12 months. He's saying, is there a world-class mouse at the distillery? And uh, Alistair the, uh, Gray is saying, uh, great to meet Simon a couple of weeks ago, Slantia. Uh, Barflies are, are keeping the, the VPUB content completely ad-free. You never need to sit, sit through an advert uh, to watch the VPUB, thanks to uh, the support of the Barflies. Thank you guys very, very much. Thanks to Daniel Williams for the drama. And Tim Durrapass Whiskey's bought us a drama to say, you guys have been killing it with independent bottlings. Can you talk about how you developed relationships to get those fantastic casks? I think it's a good question. I think well, there's a good chance that we'll get to it, uh, Tim, as we go through the, their journey. But I think the most important question, cheers for your drams. Cheers, guys. Mm, cheers, 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 cheers with yours. It's for us to answer the question about the cat. I haven't seen any distillery cats around. No, we've got a cat that makes it onto all the labels. I've got a cat at home. I was going to Wait say for me now. But every time we see a cat in a label, we're drawn to a very specific distillery. So, but there's no, there's no. I, I don't, I don't know how many mice could hide out in that t- that tiny little well, there's space. There's been mice. Oh, there's yeah, been there's mice. Been mice, mice get everywhere. Anywhere, but yeah. there's grain, I suppose. Yeah. Fantastic. Um. I so, tell me then. You've got this, you're buying these things in, you're, you're curating your own bar, you're starting to develop probably a bit of a reputation for a bar that's focused on whiskey enthusiasts. Yeah. Is that what builds your... So if I think back to the first time I heard about Phil and Simon Thompson, 10 years ago, you were you were guys that behind a bar. That's how I got to know about you guys. And if you're going to go up into the Highlands, you have to stop by the Donut Castle Hotel, go to this, it's an amazing bar, and you would see social media shares and things. How did you then 
become known through that bar or through online interaction or how did it yeah, develop? Yeah. There was a lot of stuff kind of coming through at the same time and we, you know, that was kind of the, we were looking at like some maniac maniacs following Whiskey Fun. Of course, uh, yeah. We were connecting, we're going to physical auctions, uh, you're meeting people there. You remember the old in, in the days where you literally yeah, went and went to, for yeah, things, yeah. yeah, being at auctions with like, at the front of the row was like, you know, Ben Yoni and Sukinder bidding and on stuff and buying bottles. And yeah. it was always really interesting to see like what they were buying and then trying to understand what they're doing. And it was at a time when you basically had to just be, have your knowledge and know your, you had to know your bottles, know the price that you're paying. And then, you know, you can bring them to the yeah. bar thereafter. But it was a, it was a yeah. kind of cool, almost innocent time. And we kind of met a lot of good people who are all, a lot of them are still really like close to us in our lives now who are really great whiskey people who have influenced us and helped us on, on that journey so it was a really kind of cool fun time yeah wow. and there, yeah. there's also somehow along the way we end up falling in love with uh, a lot of the older styles of whiskey and i think thinking back a little bit that was by accident um you know we, we had some older whiskies which were delicious amazing but you would go to auctions and you would see like a really old bottle of like the modern stand equivalent, like not necessarily, yeah, like a like Talisker 10 like... bottle 1970s. Sure. And you're like, oh, this is going for slightly less than uh, trade price. Well, uh, we're in for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you start tasting the old bottlings and oh, it's a very Talisker 10 year old that you get today. Uh, and then you start hunting out more of these old expressions. And, and we know, found that people were coming through the bar that were getting excited about that. Yes, yeah, so that yeah. that was pretty cool as well to kind of see that, um, and that was it's kind of that like field of dreams thing, you know. It's like you build it, they'll come, and it's like we accidentally built it and they came, um, and we ended up meeting loads of great people through the bar, over the bar, and yeah, through the know, bar, through the auction scene, through the bar, through the auction scene. Guys like you know, obviously Angus. We got when Angus was working at Mulberry's when we met him, and John Beach, who's got fiddles sure. at Loch Ness. Sure, both yeah. like very knowledgeable and generous guys and we'd get together and we used to have a thing that we used to get together with them and the idea would be always be like we'd bring like a really old bottle we'd all sit around the table and just john still got the fiddlers though right john still yeah, fiddlers yeah. yeah he's still there um he's probably cooking some fish and chips right yeah. now and drinking pints of port ellen and so angus about like sales has been through multiple layers of of uh, i think we've all just landed on our feet you know we've just kind of you know there's been various iterations and you know, independent bottling and distillery seems to be a theme uh, amongst me, Simon and Angus, certainly. I know it's I know it's a bit of a trope, and I know you say you landed on your feet and things like that, but you, it's passion. You're following passion. There's something in this liquid that has connected with you. You're in the place that it's made, literally in the place that are, they're in Sutherland, right? You know, famously Klein Leash and, um, from the seventies onward, with the what gave birth to Brora and lots of other distilleries around here too. We've got Janinic, we've got Dalmore, we've got. Probably Erglin mm -hmm. just everything is good history like, up here as well. You know, yeah. we've got distilleries all up and down this coast that were closed and you know closed for various sure. reasons. And like amazing, amazing distilleries all the way up. Yeah, you yeah. know Glen Skia, you had uh, you know the Ben Wivis, um, Ferentosh. Ferentosh, the original, the original <laughs> yeah, Ferentosh. Yeah. We were brought up to Black Ferentosh distilleries. All of the yeah iterations of Ferentosh, Polo Distillery, yeah, the ruins of Polo. Polo, uh, yeah, very much is good. Good nick. Yes, it still has its malting floor, sleeping vats. It's got its ton room. It's all still there. Uh, bonded warehouse. Just asking to just drop back to life. someone who's got <laughs> money. more money than sense <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> to bring it back. But it's incredible. And then somehow you're allowed to connect with it and you just run with it as passion. And you might have been there at the right time. You might have been at the time where everything, certainly the older styles that you're talking about falling in love with were yeah. much more accessible. Totally. But you follow it. You get that you get out that and you follow it. And you, what you've actually done is given other people uh, through quite incredibly generous sharing the prices i've seen the prices behind the bar today and i know that historically it's always been fairly priced fairly priced fairly priced you're trying hard to encourage other people to taste those liquids to taste the same liquids that you're yeah. able to to drink and things and 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 share it with them the people that make the journey to the pilgrimage to scotland the people that take the extra time to come this far north to be able to get a decent, yeah. a decent drama. I think it, it means a lot to, to people, like a small gesture can mean a lot, a lot to people. There's a few guys in the bar there and we don't hang around the bar as much as we used to. And uh, yeah. they were in the shop first thing this morning. Uh, so I was pouring a dram for Bex and it was a birthday bottle. We got Simon, 1958, Glenn Grant, 30 year old, bottle for Gordon McPhail for Italy. And I was like, those guys are sitting there and I was like, do you know what? Let's pour them a measure between them. Like, and it's like, it was something that 
would mean a lot to them and it might hopefully set them off on that kind of interesting journey of being like why does this glen we can't suggest that everyone's going to rock up and get pulled. no there's not yeah there's <laughs> no free here yeah. like no but it's a nice you know when we were behind waiting water, for you like, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> shake down um yeah but it's a nice thing we were kind of the, you know hospital we're still very much uh addicted to hospitality oh like right. so okay something's happened so i need to i don't know if you know about wook I keep referring to Wook. Uh, I, we don't know if it's a guy. I assume it could be a guy. Um, uh, he's he's uh, potentially in Europe somewhere, and uh, it's very very mysterious. We don't know much. Let's we'll get to Wook in a second. But uh, Ben Stahl, my pal Ben from from Texas, he's bought me a dram to say hey, Roy, Simon, and Phil from sunny Austin, Texas. It was great to get to the Donut Whiskey Festival last year. You got here, Ben. My goodness. It had some amazing pours the entire weekend. Can't wait till October this year to make the journey all over again. I've, I've only been able to hang out with Ben when I make the journey over to... It's incredible you were here, buddy. Um, fantastic. Thank you very much for the generous dram, Ben. And to uh, Wook, who never, ever leaves a comment. Love he's it. always super, super generous. This is the most generous he's, he's ever, ever been. Well, let's raise a glass to Ben and our mystery man, Wook. Cheers, buddy. Thank you very, very much. Your continued amazing, incredible. That's nuts. It's crazy. We need to get out of distilling. This is, just, yeah. this is a very recent thing. Uh, the, the generosity just kind of keeps coming. Listen, I just hope that. Uh, anyway, uh, all you can, all I can do is be be very very grateful. It's difficult. Um, maybe one day we'll we'll discover who you are. I'll be able to raise a glass with you. It's the least I can do, my friend. Ben Fraser celebrating being a member for forty eight months, and he's still looking forward to Phil's Craigellachy tasting. Craig Ellicott tasting. What Craig Ellicott tasting? Oh, Craig Ellicott Hotel. Yeah, cool. Yeah, ah, okay. Fun. I taste it. Graham Fraser's one of our journey. Well, you must know Graham Fraser. Yeah, yeah. He's famous. One of the most knowledgeable guys out there, too. Uh, just a fantastic guy to have in our community. And a privilege to have him as part of mine. So, how do we take it then that you're in hospitality, you've built up this bar, you've built up a reputation that Roy's sitting at home with his Instagram account is suddenly he's curious to what he's oh, I'm desperate to get up and see these. So, this guy's nuts. <laughs> yes. It's amazing. <laughs> Yes, so you'll generous. be able to upgrade that Lambo you've got outside. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that Lambo. <laughs> the Skoda Lambo. Well, yeah, Lambo you need tractor. <laughs> yes. uh, that's amazing, amazing bro. You yeah. need Starlink you need. That's what you need to travel with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you. For, and so Wook has uh, gifted anyone that wants to sign up and be a member of the Aquavitae Barflies uh, for one ninety nine of whatever your currency is every month. Wook has just purchased 50 of those. So you get access to all of the colourful channel-themed emoji, Glen Cairns emoji, that kind of thing, um, in the live chat, as well as the comments below. But what you also do is preserve uh, the VPUB being completely ad-free. Uh, once more, thanks to Wook, and thanks for everybody Cheers, that supports me as part of the Barflies. Cheers. Quite incredible. Um, Let us know if you want to buy a hotel, Wook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wook, Wook <laughs> might be getting... Uh, one of those 50 year old Glen Grants ah, exactly, on, yeah. me. <laughs> on me. On me. Anyway, so you've you've taken this, you've gone from the hospitality thing. Um, apologies that it took me so bloody long to get here, but it is a bit of a trek. Yeah. Oh, well, there's, 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 there's an important transition as well, I think, because we right. you know, we were getting into into old bottles, going to uh, uh, but then you sort of stumbled into the the European connoisseur scene, partly through the auctions, partly Huge. through friends. Yep um you know that's quite a big network and that's that's when you know it kind of accelerates gets a little bit out of control it's a very guess. generous network as well yeah like you, yeah. you know people loads of guys were super welcoming to us and some pretty cool people yeah. and we'd always make sure we turned up with some uh unobtainium some weird rarities that we found in some odd place or something we've stashed and you know you'd always make sure you had interesting things to share and yeah. people were always there with interesting things to share yeah, absolutely and i think and the buzz you get out of the vicarious enjoyment of wow look at this yeah, yeah. thing right yeah i mean you've That's got cool. if you've got one amazing bottle of whiskey for yourself you know that could be one amazing bottle shared with a whole bunch of other people with amazing bottles and you know just such a amplifies the yeah. amazing yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. you get a big sort of signal feedback from that just sharing and the, and the enjoyment of each other's company and of you enjoying their drams, them enjoy, enjoying your drams. Yeah, that's a real feedback effect. Um, yeah, that, that was that was a big acceleration accelerator as well. Uh, yeah. You know, and it, it's, 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 that's still happening now. I think it's we're all still loving to get together. It's just 
the liquid that's attainable today is probably the profile is completely different. But we can't dwell. I don't think we can dwell too much on it. It's just that it's just the nature of it. It's what yeah. it is. We can't 120 pounds for 50 year old whiskey is just not a thing anymore. No. I still so, think there's a lot of value out there. Um, absolutely. On, on the secondary market. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it's chilling out a bit now as well. And the, the primary, cool, primary, primary market yeah, still is still like way too expensive. A lot of uh, bigger independent bottlers and bigger companies have just, they're off the mark a little bit. Once we why, get the premium bug, we, yeah, we just run with that's it. That's why I find it quite refreshing with the latest batch of like signatory stuff that came out. Yes, yeah, so 100 proof. 100 proofs were very cool. They're very good, good pricing, but also, you know, even the slightly older stuff wasn't a mental price. You know, it felt like it was ex not quite accessible, but it was better than it would have been a couple of years yeah, ago. Coming down. Um, it felt like the whole, they've kind of taken a hint and been like, right, I should just soften things here a wee bit because the market's softening. And right across um, the spectrum, even at the higher end of stuff like you're talking about, Seve on the way up here today was raving about his daily drinker being a 46% unique. He just, from uh, until filter from from uh, he just he's loving it yeah 43 pounds 46 percent um easy drinker fairly consistent on on the on the turnout 11 well. pound of that is duty and then you've got 12 percent of that is vat yeah you know so it's actually there's not much in it really yeah thanks to signatory actually yeah there's been continuing to be uh yeah it's been really refreshing so hopefully we see more of that from some of the bigger guys we're talking about the discounts that you throw and things so well i have to say see, as well thank you to you guys as well because when we talk about your releases, they're hard to get. They're, t they're tough to get, especially the, the more kind of in-demand stuff, let's say. You have a ballot system in place. We'll probably have to touch on that. But your prices, when we do get a hold of them, you can see why they're in demand because they're fairly priced. And the, the presentation is always top-notch as well. And I get the sense that I, mean, I don't have enough experience with Thompson Brothers bottlings, but I get the sense that it doesn't matter because everything I've had so far is already fantastic and you're not going to put anything out that's kind of subpar. You've got other things you can do with yeah. it, right? Yeah. We get becoming uh, a good few years ago, uh, we became full process independent bottlers. So rather than so just, oh, just go too boys. far. Go well, too no, far. no. Let's what back is the bar? No, that's, no, 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 no. I do, I do. So we've, we've got up your, you know, the, 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 Europe, the European whiskey scene and all of that kind of thing. What comes first from then on in? Because I want to understand exactly what a full process independent bottler is, because it's that's pretty crucial. And I also, but I also want to understand: Did you build the distillery on the back of some independent bottling, or did the distillery come first and that allowed you to get involved in some independent bottling, or did it all kind of come at the same time? So we're, we're establishing deep philosophical principles yeah, tonight. Which we, Thompson came first? What came first? The yeah. Distillery. So yeah, and but and it's going to be here for posterity. Yeah, so whatever yeah. comes out tonight is, is yeah. this is fact. Yeah. Right? So so prior prior to the distillery, uh, we had done a few. We had organised a few bottlings. Uh, organised a few independent bottlings, kind of not kind of casual yeah, things for, for the for, bar for special events um, for the bar. Nothing, nothing serious, nothing we're really like making any money on, just kind of a bit of a fun... Almost hobbyist. Right. Side. And there's yeah, only yeah, yeah. You were, you were buying two or three yeah. things. 60, 120 bottles yeah, for the bar. Uh, you know, and yeah. and yeah. it's part of special special tours that we would do with our friends, these kind of things. Uh, so nothing nothing serious in advance of the distillery. And uh, independent bottling was never part of the plan. Uh, we, were, uh, we were actually asked by our Japanese importer, who was taking our gin into Japan, if we would do a bottling. I'm like, oh yeah, we've done that before. We can do that. And one became two, two became three, and so on. We just kept rolling that over. And yeah, it's kind of got out of control. We always made sure hitting the the a really good price point, really cool label, really good liquid. And yeah, it just kind of snowballed from there, not deliberately. Sorry to diminish what you've just said, but it's not difficult. Fair price, decent product. Interesting backstory, nice label plane. I was congratulating you earlier, but I think it was you, Phil, earlier, celebrating your, you embracing the tall round, keeping it simple, keeping it straightforward, keeping it accessible, affordable, all of that. Why pay all that extra money on a fancy bottle when very few people actually care? Um, yeah. As a, you know, for so many experiences that we have out, and I'm not asking for your commentary necessarily on this, but I'm offering mine as an enthusiast today, we're sometimes a bit frustrated because it seems like it's quite straightforward, this thing, mm -hmm. how it can get so convoluted and, and overcooked and, and overgilded. Yeah, times, right? I think, you know, it's just that I've been pondering on this a wee bit lately as we've been going through a lot of stuff with our 
you know, fundraising and business plans and summaries for the new distillery. And it's been made me kind of ponder a lot on various aspects of how we've ended up coming into doing what we're doing. Um, and a lot of it was like cemented. The hard yards were done in the bar. You know, the contacts we made, um, the people that we met, the philosophies that we kind of gained based on feedback from people from all over the world on what whiskey is and what whiskey should be. And it should be an accessible thing that should be a fair price and should be enjoyed in the community and with other people. And that was really important to us and kind of cemented maybe unconsciously when we moved into Thompson Brothers and the independent bottling side of things where, you know, I'm not from a background where like, I'm not from a sales background selling product and understanding exactly. I, like, I understand bar margins, how that works, hospitality. Yeah. But I was going in and being like, okay, well, are we making money on this? Can we cover our costs? Can we wash our faces? Can we make it work? And I wasn't going, well, it has to be 25, 25. We have to make sure that this margins here and put this in for like brand representation and marketing budget has to be built into this. And I was just going, well, what's liquid cost us? What would we like to sell it at? What do we think is a fair price as whiskey consumers? And we'll work our way back from that. And if it doesn't stack up, then we need to find a way to make it work. And to do that is by having accidentally, it's really strong direct sales. Direct sales kind of supplement what we offer. To when you say direct, direct to consumer. Direct to consumer, that allows yeah. us to supplement um, some of the prices that our importers get, our, re our retailers get. So, so it might make less of a margin with these guys, but we've made up a little bit based on having strong direct sales instead of being like, we have to make X amount of retail, have to make X amount of direct sales and have to make X amount of selling to a, so a, a, a pragmatism market. and a mix. Yeah, it's kind of a mixed sales model yeah. and where does it average out at? So I think it, it wouldn't make sense in a big company, you know, to kind of put, bring that into play because your board would be like, why are you doing this? You've got to change this. The model, the model should be yeah, different, but it absolutely. works. Yeah. And you know, we've, I think Simon touched on it earlier with the full process bottler is we, for us, because we've never had loads of money behind the business, we've needed to flow that and make that money work really hard for us. So having that flow coming through the business is more important than having stagnant stock. Right, of course. Sitting there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was always, you know, the most important thing in the independent bottling. And, you know, those, those kind of philosophies were, were garnered the way through the way we're working in the bar and our understanding of whiskey and also speaking to like the old guard of enthusiasts from mainland Europe who were like, you know, yeah. we used to pay, you know, X amount for Macau and 25 year olds, you know, 150 year olds or something. And, you know, you hear these stories and think it's crazy, but then, you know, it helped us align with like what the expectation of what whiskey should be. If that makes any sense. At all. No, it does. Make, it, it, no, it does. Yeah. It doesn't. You're not rambling, and it does make perfect sense to me. A lot of these guys are still available. You go to Limburg or somewhere like yeah. that. I still been yeah. been a lot of these guys. Yeah. The things that they are sharing, and you can tell. I think you mentioned the old guard. It's not my words. It's yours. I understand it completely. And when you see the prices on the table for really things that I've only seen pictures of, are literally you can pick it up and hold it in your hands there. And it's affordable and you can taste these liquids in 2020 well the last time was at limbo 2023 i'm going in a couple of weeks i'll yeah. see you there but yeah, we can we can do it all again and it's just there seems to be a, a kind of people with that mindset that still love what how their life has potentially been enhanced by whiskey and the only it's not because they're sitting at home on their sofa there's nothing wrong with that it's very enjoyable mm -hmm. but it's because of the connections that they've made the bringing people together and this idea, and I know that I sometimes get, uh, it's easy, it's a throwaway thing to say, but people, it's a people's drink. Mm. And I don't mean it's, that means it's for, it's, 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 it's for everybody. It's not this big egalitarian thing. It's just, it's a people's drink because that it was spent grain, right? And it became something that people could celebrate together, weddings, funerals, social occasions, whatever it was. And it's somehow today for various reasons, right, wrong, and everything in between, a lot of it's suddenly out of reach, and but yeah, there are forces still at play, and I'm grateful for them, that seem to be able to hold the tide back a wee bit and make it accessible. Not everywhere for everybody, always right across the world. It's going to be frustrating for a lot of people that tune in tonight. I can't get my hands on the Thompson Brothers stuff. Yeah, you've seen the size of the distillery. <laughs> you know, it's 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 not e even your independent yeah, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's really tough. It's tough to keep up with the with the demand you know and as you know as we touched on earlier so you know a lot of it's just been it's been everything we've made from the independent building has gone back into production it's been all about supporting Dornick distillery production making single malt Dornick distillery normal model for an independent bottler is like raise some mon money buy a cast sell a cast have enough money to buy two casts keep one sell one yeah. build inventory build stock holding 
Um, for us, it's just never been able to really do that. It's been more opportunist and just when we've had the cash, make it work and make it work hard for us and get it out to the consumer at a fair price. Um, and it's just been through necessity, but it's also been in line with what our philosophies are yeah, about whiskey and having yeah. Yeah. There, there is, you know, There is greater forward planning and stock building now. Um, so you know, we're building up not badly um, stock holding for the independence. We can work a bit further ahead. Yeah, the priority is always Dornick. It, yeah. it always was Dornick yeah. in the early days. Yeah. Do, Dorn, yeah. As in building yeah. the inventory yeah. of Fill, Filling casks of Dornick is the equivalent of another independent bottler doing new fillings. Um, so our new fillings are Dornick. We, we have very few new fillings from other distilleries. Uh, yeah, all that gets spent on. Can, can I mention how long it takes you guys to fill an ASB, a, a standard barrel? Yeah. It's three days to fill a 200 litre, 225 max, 200 litre barrel, as you know, as three days worth of production. I, it's, it is really tiny. So listen, I, I feel wherever you live and you maybe want to get your hands on some Dornick, Dornick distillate or some uh, Thompson Brothers independent bottlings even, uh, it's hard and you maybe just have to uh, find the mule network helping you out and, and things like that. But uh, if you come to the source, I guarantee there's plenty of it here. Greg in Paris is saying, I hear the praise for Thompson Brothers bottlings. Please ask them, is there a chance to see that their whiskey's come to France? So it's mm -hmm. right on the yeah. side. Thanks in advance. Really just saw there. two bottles once only, but couldn't try. So France, is it uh, particularly tricky? Sure, not as the biggest. Uh, no, it's a, we've, we've got a good importer in uh, based in Manosque down in Provence, <coughs> France. Um, Lagoste, who's good independent bottle, yeah. nice quality family company. They distribute really well. Uh, Vary and Dan, who worked with us, were there two weekends ago for festival so nice. they were meeting loads of people and doing tastings and chatting away and obviously it was a bit of a battle to see who got to go to provence in like spring um but yeah it was a cool it's 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 a really cool festival and there's a really great family so was it you that got to go no it was Barry and dan they, they went so darren dan's french so he gets okay to, you know he, okay, he's, he's got a competitive advantage <laughs> okay. um, but yeah it's, it's a cool cool market and they do really well for us um but yeah it's just for us it's volume you've seen our warehouse even the likes of building inventory building pallets um it's like the bane of jack's existence of like you know you have to prepare another pallet and it's like god where do i put it um we had a, a couple of years ago a big order for the us going into our importer at out wines and it was eight pallets and it kept being delayed and it wasn't through the fault of the importer it was just like the the, the hollier who was consolidating with other drinks companies and it kept being delayed so we're like eight pallets you've seen the size of our warehouse which is like i can't imagine yeah. how eight pallets would fit there's eight one pallets, pallet yeah taking up a hell of a lot of space in there right now it's, so, that's incredible it's yeah, tough yeah. right yeah, it's been yeah. really tough, but we, you know, through in, you know adversity, we've managed to yeah. figure out how. <laughs> you, always, you, always, you always make it work. It's yes, like, it is the mother yeah. of invention. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I always say it's like one of those little puzzles where you've got the tiles and there's one blank space yes. and you have to move the tiles <laughs> around. Uh, there's there's <laughs> days where you're, you're doing that throughout the day. Double should be your job yeah. 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 <laughs> Fix the tiles. Jimmy Legg is here, of course he is. Good to see you, and Jimmy, it's always good to welcome you. Saying, of course, I want to try their whiskey, but it really is enough to know that there are still people trying to make and bottle whiskey properly. Jimmy, I guarantee I know a wee bit about your preferences and your palate and things like that. I have a suspicion that you would love being here and trying some of the stuff at the source. Maybe this year, big guy, but thanks for the drum. Jim, cheers, Jimmy. Thank you very much. Carl T. Lauren Steck. Both celebrating, uh, oh, sorry, both signing up to join the Barflies this evening. Thank you very, very much for your support. Uh, Rick Johnson is saying we can't get Thompson Brothers here in the US either, but the Redacted Brothers is delicious. Well, I don't we've, know if you know anything we've, about that. Maybe something I've heard, heard of those guys. You've heard of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. May yeah. touch on that a wee bit later. Luna Aaron is saying, so which kind of barrels are you working with? I got a wee sense of that today that I think is... You're open to most things as long as it's oak. Right? Yeah, we don't yeah. rush it like red wine and stuff like that. You know, but it's not wouldn't be our priority fresh red wine or SDR. Yeah, and mostly things. in the ballpark like, of what I would consider traditional, traditional cast types. Yeah. Um, so we, we yeah, tequila cast up the glen, up the strath and <laughs> climb above climb each facility yeah. that just the, roll out from the uh, murderer's house. The, yeah. the, the occasional oddity gets slipped in. Uh, you know, Phil Phil take a fancy to something like fine do one. Um, oh, we, but yeah, we oh, did the bloody. What did I do? Oh, you did the 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 beer casks. Oh, the beer casks. They were great. It worked out really well. Uh, and the uh, the cider casks, which won't be really whiskey. Cask, so there's, there's a big barrel. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah with yeah. both of those, they were very much not like me going to a supplier and be like, I want this. It was like came from a local producer. It was a local product. The yeast was the yeast that we use in the distillery. So I felt the link was good enough. 
come back. The cider, I really like the guy's cider. I think he's great. And do you know what? It's Dornick. It's one cask. It's not going to be an issue getting rid of it at the far end. Um, so did it work? Uh, we don't know. I mean, it's actually. I think it's sitting at a. Is it maybe sitting somewhere else at the moment. I'm not sure. I've not tried. Yeah, we might, we might move out. Yeah, we ran out of warehousing space. We have to we got, uh, ship um, new fillings out. So there's a whole bunch of young stuff that we our, have. Our friends at Rassi mm -hmm. sent us something like cool. What was the the was it Andy Andy and all? Andy and yeah, yeah. They sent us a cask to fill, which was really cool. So we've got one of those sitting around somewhere. Um, but yeah. So there you go, Luna. They will experiment a wee bit, but generally speaking, they like to keep it quite tight and and. Yeah, uh, I, I love the love the dechar rechar as well. It's one of the me uh, too. Love the favorites. Favorites. Uh, our, yeah. our, our spirit works really well in dechar rechar. Um, yeah. And as well, being independent bottlers, we always at uh, full process. We we'll always have an excess of old casks, and uh, you know, send them off to get dechar rechar. You got nice old wood that's held something interesting. That's the oak's really old, well seasoned. And then get that scraped and recharged, and it can make an amazing cask. And you know, you take long term stuff, but it's, yeah. yeah, it's good, good quality. And it's good for sustainability to get a, a yeah. bit more life out of the cask as well. I have to say, Sevy's nodding like a wee dog in the background there, Dechar Rechar. He loves his stuff, but Sevy was also nodding heavily about the red wine, though, oh, because he's, he's, he's one of these guys that loves yeah. the, the, the big full, big full maturation red wines. Yeah, works it finds it kind of better, out and then it kind of. Tempers yeah. off a wee touch, or a very long finish, short finishes just don't have the time they to never, fully they are, integrate. Two drinks sitting on top of each other, right? Yeah, yeah. it needs it needs a lot of time with red wine casks to fully develop. Full Bruna say magnifique. Hey, oh, a very generous dram coming in from a pal from the states. Say, hey, Mark Goins, good to see you, buddy. Hey, Mark was the guy who carved the compass that sits over my right shoulder every V pub when I'm not on location. Oh, obviously, right. he sent it from the states. It's always brilliant to see him in. Hey, it was at the castle and distillery exactly one year ago because of the because of Highland Hamish. We managed to meet Highland Hamish on the way up today. He had a cup of coffee ready and waiting for us. We had a quick pit stop, and he's saying, hey, "Great drams and my first la his first langoustine." Hey, it can't be your last. It's one of the one that we, we export too many langoustines. They're just they should be kept here. Quite fantastic things. Do you do langoustines on the menu here? Uh, yeah, sometimes we do. Yeah, yeah, specials, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It kind of comes and goes as a special. Terrific stuff. Fantastic. So what's what's the focus now? We've got the, the distillery. It's not particularly huge, or but it is amazing in a very very unique way. You have plans, though. I suggested ten times scale. Is that right? Is that me speaking out of turn? Is it? I am sort of. Uh, it's a, it's a bit more than that. So we're we're barely capable of touching twelve thousand liters of alcohol a year with our style of production. Uh, if everything goes to plan, we can maybe touch twelve thousand. Um, if we didn't do what we do there, we could get up to thirty thousand liters out of the same space. Uh, just just to put this into perspective, Daft Mill is about 60, 50 or sixty, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's twelve thousand liters. It's just it's yeah. incredible. It's uh, yeah, it's not not a lot of liquid. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, the new the new site. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a funny number because the equipment capacity is quite large because we're looking to build it as off grid capable. Uh, so we'll be able to supplement the energy, but we've oversized the equipment to give us the headspace for double shift large size production for like three months of summer with maximum solar energy and then dial that down across the year. Oh, okay. So the equipment is oversized. If you ran it full blast double shift, you could probably do 400,000 litres of alcohol. Uh, but uh, we're aiming to do uh, circa somewhere, it depends with how the final energy efficiency works out, but we'll be gunning for somewhere in the ballpark of 230,000 uh, litres of alcohol, uh, fully off-grid production from, from our own on-site renewables. But we could supplement that to punch up to 400,000. So, again, to give you a scale of perspective there, that if they're somewhere between the 230, 250 to 400, that's close to hard to market scale. Yeah, that kind of. Um, so, that's that's the, that's the leap from from the smallest distillery, you know, 10 to 12,000 litres, 12,000 in a good year, <laughs> to potentially up to close to. Uh, if you really go for it, 400,000 litres. Are we pouring more? Are we pouring some? Right. right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. We should be pouring. I, well, some... I was drinking this, but I think you should drink that. Um, and I'll take a, I'll take well, a stunt whiskey. Unless you want to have some of this. I actually brought a wee gift for you. 
And I was going to stop by a drink monger and pick up that bottle you were going to. Yeah. It didn't need to happen in the end. Okay. But I was going to pick up a wee Spayburn 10 year old. Oh. Just as a wee tongue in cheek. It would have been, would have gone down well, right? We don't, we don't have a wee right? 10 year old. But I didn't, I didn't do that no, because right. for anybody that doesn't know, um, back in the day, the, the, these guys were kind of well known for promoting Spayburn being this kind of under the radar, unknown distillery, warm tub distillery. Yeah. Quite interesting production, quite an interesting malt. A malt that's come on uh, for us in the VPUB community, for me and things like that. We're really quite loving Spayburn just now. We love how fantastic the batch variation is. Yeah. The colour variation and things like that is just fabulous to see. And a really good solid malt whiskey, fully natural whiskey as well. Fantastic. So we're going to bring that to you, even though, even though it was a 40% 10 year old. But I didn't because there's another wee distillery that's quite close to your hearts too. Yes. Very and cool. uh, this is an inaugural bottling, <laughs> but it's but it's kind of not really. But we'll let them have it. A uh, you know it was taken over in 2018, I think 2019 by yeah. Douglas Lang and Company Strathern Distillery, and um, they had a couple of uh, releases, obviously. Um, but this is the, the this is using liquid since uh, Dougie Lane uh, got into to, to uh, involved so some of their liquid in here too, non age statement, but it's just out this week. And I know it's a wee bit of a distillery that's close to your heart. So this is a wee gift for oh, you guys oh, too. Amazing, so right? I'm not going to put pressure on you to open it just now. Oh, you want well, to I really it. want to try it. Yeah. yeah. Right, well, let's get it tried. It or... Let's get it tried. Sorry. Have you tried this? I've not tried it. This will be the first time for me too. Absolutely. So um, can I remember what the cast types were on this? It was, bur it was some virgin oak, some bourbon. I think it's a bit, a bit of a sorts. mishmash. Uh, the, the, Lovely the, bottle. And then a can, it's bur 80, bourbon virgin. It's 80 um, quid. It's a bit pricey, but it's an inaugural. Well, it's an inaugural. An inaugural. inaugural. Number it's three. <laughs> number three inaugural. But but it's, it's probably, there's been worse. I think 80 is the peak of what they could have charged. So... We'll get a wee bit, and we'll just we'll we'll. Do, this is a neck pour. There's no there's no reviews going on here. We're not gonna. Terrific. And uh, this is the Rastal glass as well. Yeah, a favorite. I like the love the Rastal. Yeah, I like them because they're pretty um, pretty heavy juices. They're bar Quite, proof. Yeah. Um, I've got a glass shelf in the in the V pub. And the Rastal is just a wee bit too tall. Oh. So I just need to change it. Anyway, cheers. cheers. Thanks, cheers. Thanks, cheers. Thanks, cheers. Thanks, thanks for the bottle. That's uh, so, really Thank you. It's 46% ABV. Let's have a look at this. Brand new just out. Oh. Not too bad. Barley either. type Mara Salter. I like that. They've mentioned that. Yeah, well, they stuck to, um, they started with Mara Salter. It's one of the things. Um, I can, it's fruity. Very yeah. Fruity. When, when uh, in the early days of Strathern, I kind of petitioned quite hard on a, on a few different things when they were building out. And one of the things, are, yeah. Oh, they, of course. They, sorry, they, I've got just pass sorry, it around. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll pass we're, it back we've got we've got a couple of folk in the green room. Um, they might, we might bully them into joining us a wee bit later, especially for the quiz at the end, of course. So, sorry, yeah, Phil, sorry, I, mean, yeah, sorry. I petitioned them quite hard about a number of older style things because at the point when Strathern was starting up, uh, I'd also been doing a lot of. Uh, research on old style whiskies, uh, different elements required, and uh, Tony there at the time took some of that to heart, started playing around with some stuff, and as a re result of that, um, they used kind of older varieties of the you know, Mars Alters, sort of circa 1960s, it was first developed, uh, so they took a bit of that to heart, uh, and in fact, just for fun, because I, I told you, because we just bottled it a few weeks ago, and I told you about it, um, from started the working on this in 2013, distilled it early 2014, but as a result of doing some stuff with Strathern in the very early days, uh, they let me loose to do my first ever full scale legal whiskey experiments. And this is pre Dornick. Pre yeah, this is Dornick. like a proto Dornick recipe, and we just uh, we just bottled it at. Um, 10 years old, uh, not going to sell to the public because we kind of had a bit of a friends event around it and split the cask that we made uh, between all of us. So everyone's but it's a tiny amount of liquid too, right? Yeah, every, everyone, 20 of us, we all got a case uh, 10 years later. So uh, yeah, 10, 10 year old uh, Strathern, wandering distiller. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, what did we do with this one? Uh, two week fermentation time. Two week fermentation time. Yeah, we wow. did, uh, it was it was Mars Alter Barley, uh, but we did, uh, we did that, we actually did, probably shouldn't actually go into too much detail on this because it's a little bit iffy, but we didn't, we didn't use their, uh, we didn't. It's not for sale anyways. Yeah. 
Yeah, we didn't we didn't use those we didn't use their washbacks uh, stainless steel conicals. I, I didn't want we, I couldn't take them out of action for two weeks to do my lot extra long fermentation time. So I got a whole bunch of old tired hoggies, chopped the heads off them, and ran uh, ran a bank of hogsheads as the fermentation, fermentation type. Yeah, fermentation uh, wow. instead of uh, distillers yeast, which is what they ended up using as a bit of insurance policy in the end. Uh, uh, this guy was done with. Um, propagated uh, brewer's yeast uh, from an old Scottish uh, brewing strain that was used in some distilleries in the 60s. And then extra extra slow distillations. And it came out so when we talk fast. about it being proto-Dornock, you can see by the philosophy and by the ingredients and by the, what they've tried to do there, two-week fermentation, uh, using brewer's uh, yeast yeah. instead of uh, maybe a, a mix of dry distiller's yeast, which is much more convenient and easy. Uh, this is a much more tricky thing to do and it's a lot of these things you've carried forward and you're, you're still playing around with that kind of thing today so we are going to be able to do a wee comparison here well i wouldn't but i, wouldn't I suspect I wouldn't despite it being both yeah. made at the same distillery this, 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 is, not, yes, this, is, this is probably the oldest strath there never bottled whereas you know um this, yeah. will, this will probably be a bit of a mix of vintages so they'll probably be using some well, early stuff some later stuff i'm up for trying a wee bit of the the first ever whiskey eh, that the thompson brothers actually made it wasn't actually at their own distillery. It was down the road in Strathairn, the Southern Highland, Strathairn, isn't it? Perth, yeah. Perth just First, yeah. Yeah. First legal whiskey. Oh, it was in one of these kind of. Yeah. Oh my goodness! This new is sherry, modern sherry cask things. God, can I, is there enough to pour for the, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, of the gallery? Yeah. <laughs> I think best, just best make sure you guys are getting covered too. Earlier. That's sure. The, the sherry yeah. when we had the sample, like five years old, it was. Um, pretty punchy and the sherry was a bit too yeah. dominant it yeah it's quite it's quite hard work at five it's a, it's a wee bit funky yeah. the, other, the other one's quite bright and, and fresh Sensing. and fruity and uh, yeah. effervescent fruity this is taking me down a kind of darker path this is kind of like <laughs> a but it's not mushroom funk it's not that kind of it's just dark berries dark ripe overripe it's a wee bit funky. Cheers. Yeah, it's quite filthy stuff. Dunnage, dunnage vibes in the palate. Yeah. Wow. It's like a port cask thing going on there, that red berry thing. There. Yeah. It's quite funny. It's the sort of cask that now we would just never put anything into. <laughs> we would not work with. It's like one of these new constructed quarter not quite quarter cast was 100 liter sherry seasoned yeah um, okay thinking okay. thinking now I would just, accelerated uh, cast yeah, yeah. basically yeah yeah it got, um, it got really out of balance in its younger years but then given enough time it's kind of a bit like the red wine casks it's really come back and integrated so this finish, was, finishes like builders black tea yeah, builders black super tea. super super dry right super it's, strong super tannic it's wheeled and intent like it's got a real i think that's got a real it's about a bite to it what's the abv what have you bought Maybe 57 one so 100 proof 100 proof yeah 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 yep, yep. and we've gone so this was bottled the whole idea of this this was done for the the pre-war whiskey tour which was one of our sort of old whiskey gatherings we used to do um so you've got a bunch of kind of european and so British. this is when you talk about the eclectic nature of whiskey yeah and the continental guys the club that you get involved in yeah it's a decade ago. This is so. This is where this came from. Yeah, anyway. basically. So there, there's a lot of cool. I mean, it was really good fun. You've got the Dram Tanabi label. You know, which well, I'm gonna. I'll try and get the camera to focus on it. I mean, I don't know how much it wants to play, but there's a lot. There's a couple of famous faces there. Come on, if you can focus for me, cat man doesn't want to do it. <laughs> I have oh. the most temperamental. I tell you what, I'll try and do. I'll. I'll. There's an image I've got of this. Would it be okay to share a link to the yeah, image? Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah. So I, if you're watching this on the replay, you'll see a wee description the, below that I'll put the, the label in. And it was quite a good fun. I, sh I should also add, add as well that on the on the production side of it, I had a certain uh, Mr. Sponge turn up to uh, to assist with some of the production too. So he's well, had back his, in the day. Yeah, so his yeah, fingerprints yeah. are on this as well. Yeah, his, yeah. his dirty little fingerprints. Are uh, it's all not right bad too. fingerprints to have. No, no, no. On, on, a, on a whiskey. To be uh, fair, uh, the, the, the cup points were done by committee as well. Yeah, that was, that was a bad idea. But yeah, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 it was fun. But we had to, it was really good. I mean, the pre-war whiskey tour was kind of a bit of a, a weird, fun gathering where I think we started in Glasgow and we went to like Wet and Kai's office. And the whole idea was basically you you, you bring a bottle that was distilled and bottled before the end of the Second World War. 
Mm. And we it kind of these things started, I think, originally with Brewer Academy, which was in 2013. So it's basically we got a big, massive lineup of brewer, a bunch of enthusiasts. Everyone brought bottles, and we sat and just opened loads of silly brewers up at the distillery, the old filling store. We did um, um, an event up there with everyone, and then we came back here and just basically drammed an old brewer. Um, and then from there, we did the pre-war whiskey tour, which was. Probably we did that. And we did the Isla Odyssey. And the pre-war tour was probably one of the most fun tours. And we did, uh, so the Isla Odyssey, like, if I remember yeah, yeah. well, and I followed this on social media too. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of sharing. That was quite a private event, but there was some. Yeah, and you, you and did. you took the original. You, you went back to the source, didn't you? Yeah. You took really ancient Kalila back to Kalila. Yeah, back, yeah, yeah. That was the idea. So we did we did that on Isla. We did that in Speyside for the the pre-war tour. We hired out this like weird house on airbnb that was had like one hot one warm room not even hot one warm room um it was really good fun it was a bunch of great people um some faces on there one of our um you know special mention one of our good friends diego sandrin who passed away three four weeks ago now he was a guy who ran lions whiskey he was a really good friend you would have met him at limburg seen him at limburg oh wow Queen he was a super yeah. guy like he really really i think angus wrote a, an amazing piece on on whiskey fun about him and it talked about you know the way he was really engaging with younger people about whiskey and you know us being like three weird scottish guys that had an interest in old italian bottles was really unusual for this like kind of european geek scene um and diego was always like the first guy to be like yeah cool i can you know give you a great price he'll always look after you always pour your drams and he was just like a yeah, really super guy. But everyone on there, there's a big glass to Diego. Yeah, yeah man, for sure. He's a yeah. super dude, for sure. Fantastic. Yeah, big influence on us, for sure. And everyone on here is a great influence. Um, you've got Marcel Van Gils and Jeroen Kowitzer, uh, Emmanuel Drawn, Drawn. So, yeah. Bone dry. <laughs> Bone dry in the finish, right? But that's, I think, when, I, when there's a dryness in the finish, there's this idea that it's quite Moorish. You kind of want to go back and kind of go more. It's. Uh, Pretty interesting we yeah. thing you created 10 well, years ago. One of the things you mentioned there, talking about the... I think these guys are a wee bit like Angus, to be honest with you. Look, a wee bit too young to speak about whiskey with the experience they're speaking about. But we have to just remind everyone, you were teenagers when you started exploring behind yeah, that we, we, yeah. we both got an early start and an accelerated start because, you know, you, if you, you, know, you, can, if you can only buy so many bottles for yourself, but we would buy bottles, open it for ourselves, open it for friends. Then on the bar, on the bar, get some money back for that. Then Buy you've got again. more money to spend on whiskey. Uh, so yeah, then, it's not it's not a bad model. It's not a bad model. It's, uh, it's pretty good. But one actually, I think I didn't know you were going to turn. Sorry, up can you it. pass the rasse? Congratulations for taking over the hotel. Heard in twenty twenty two says Tim Donner Pass Whiskey that it was for sale. <laughs> So glad that you're keeping it as yeah. we want to stay with you. Was it genuinely up for sale? Yeah, it was up for sale. Our parents were looking to retire. We didn't want to be hoteliers, uh, but yeah, we we ended up. We kind of we kind of wanted to, but we kind of didn't. I can remember this thing. Um, uh, so yeah, I think then, once when you've come when when you've grown up through hospitality and all of your experience of hospitality, no matter how much you say you hate hospitality. It's it's really becomes part of you, and Sorry. it's like in your roots and in your DNA. Yeah. And it's um, well, I've not had a chance to explore this building in any kind of real meaning. But I just go into my room and back. I got lost twice today. It's a maze of kind of ancient, ancient. When we talk about patina, is I don't mean I mean this in the most positive way. Everything you touch from those banisters, those handrails going upstairs, the iron, the metal, the carpets, the the windows, the shape of the windows, the style of the windows, will these windows open or not, or it's everywhere. This is an ancient, ancient thing. Endearing, charming, and there's not a single bit of it designed to be such. Yeah. It's just ended up being like that over. Yeah, we're very fortunate. It's an amazing building in the centre of a beautiful town and an amazing part of Scotland. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Sevi and I both the first time up here ever. Yeah, so it's the furthest north I've ever been in Scotland. Really? Yeah, furthest north. It's a bit of embarrassing to see, but yeah. I'm, I, 
kind of wee bit of a nosebleed coming yeah, as far yeah, into kind of thing. Ryan Sutherland won't be happy with yeah, that. Yeah, I know, well, you've got, got to keep going. going. Yes. Keep well, going. we've already got plans for everybody that's, well, for you guys, we'll be up here again, and, and everybody that's further north as well will be killing it up. We've realised how easy it is. Just a, a quickie in case you're interested, Ryan, because I didn't know you were going to turn up with some Strathern for us today. No problem. But uh, on the way out of the office, because um, I knew I was taking this, I spotted this and thought it might be interesting. This is a sample of Strathern cask 001, the first ever Strathern. So we bottled, uh, on behalf of Tony, all of his private casks after he left Strathern. He was away for a while. And you said, yeah, no problem. We can do that for you. We can sell them on your behalf. You take all the money. That's fine. You know, you did us really, you know, really helped us out back in the day. We kept in touch. And so, yeah, this is Strather and cask number one. Oh my goodness. So we bottled this at what, nine years old or 10 years old, Phil? 10 years old. Oh, I can't remember. Do you want me to drop that? I'm okay just now. I've got, yeah, two glasses of Strather and I think I'm Well, I've managed fine. to tear through it quite successfully. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I'm doing okay. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah, Again, another privileged thing. This was, this was their first effort. And uh, yeah, so bourbon, was, bourbon cask? Oh, it was like one of these small weed casks, wasn't it? It was a weed. Was it 100 litre virgin? Or I can't remember what it was. Uh, it's not on the, it's not on the yeah, label no, here. Yeah, yeah. So it's like the It'll be online. Right now, but it'll be on whiskey base. Someone in the comments will tell us. It's all, it's cream custard creams. And, and yeah, we, we did a, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did a series of seven casks for, for Tony. Um, there's all kinds of interesting stuff from early Strathairn production. I have to say, I really like this. Um, it's quite fun. It's a nice whiskey. I like it too. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to texture. get another one and take it over to Limburg, I think. I think yeah. it would be a nice bottle to take over. Oh. There's just three completely different Strathairns. Yeah. That tastes like nothing like we've just had there. Yeah, people have tuned in for Garnick night and they're having Strathairn. Yeah, we're having a Strathairn yeah. night. That's okay. We're <laughs> celebrating Strathairn. They've, you know, they've... they've just, apparently they've just released their, their inaugural. <laughs> well, the influence does a lot, you know, and the, you know the, the size yeah. and scale was yeah, to, and to, Tony, achievable. Tony, it, it all of a sudden became achievable. Yeah, us. Tony pushed a lot of boundaries, open door because before Strathairn, there were you know they enforced the um, the still size limit, so minimum still which size, which is huge because yeah. there's a lot of small distilleries in existence today because of the inspiration and the you know. Yeah. It was it Tony, used to be Tony, very, very Tony pushed that door open. There wouldn't have been you know without without Strathern and Tony's work there, there wouldn't have been uh, a Dornick distillery and there wouldn't have been a the small of scale stores. independent yeah. uh, innovators. But aye, cheers to Tony. Yeah, yeah. he's a good guy. Oh yeah, he's just um announced his new project. Orkney. Yeah, Orkney. Yeah, which is cool. Yeah. What's Orkney? Um the guys who do Kirk Yiver Gin, they're making malt as well, and Tony's involved in that. A third distillery on Orkney. Yeah, I think there's there's the more is there not like it's not like pitch battles in Orkney as to like yeah it's going to be the most north and stuff. Uh, um, oh, yeah. well, that's, that, that's why we you know you say about being smallest. smallest. We never think of that because someone can always be you know more up, more down, more small, more big, more left, more right. No, it's me that's made that call. That's absolutely yeah. right. You would, yeah. you would never declare yourself no. the smallest distillery. I said that based yeah. on my. The, the important thing is the the liquid in the glass. Uh, you know. Claims other people can outdo you on your claims, but as long as the liquid's good, that's the that's the important factor. So that's that's the, hopefully the only claim we'll we'll push is the the, the quality and method that goes into. It really it. Well, I'm well. gonna I'm gonna push. I'm, I've got a couple of prompts. I'm gonna pull up on screen here and, and just kind of get your take on it. But before we do that, is there any hot takes? Anything happening with a new distillery? Any news? What's the latest on it? How far are we away? Is it is it legit? Is it actually going to happen? Um, it's only 200, 200 meters from here. So we have planning permission. We're uh, currently going through the building warrant phase. Um, so that's basically to get the permission to make the structure in the way, or or the, the sort of um, the, the standards have to be correct for the structure and so on. So that's the building warrant phase we're going through at the moment. Uh, there's some geotech going on at the moment, geotechnical surveys to make sure the foundations can be designed correctly. Um, there has been really fun stuff like asbestos surveys. There's been an archaeologist on sites. Um, so there is stuff happening. Um, we're going through, you know, we're, we will do a community-based funding, crowdfunding thing again in the future, but we are having to go and get yeah, some private it. money to kick off with. Um, so that's been... You know, I think as I said to you today, so it's, it's at the front of my mind and has been for like a year. But well, you're young enough to deal with the stress. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. Know, yeah. we've been, we've been uh, pretty <laughs> much uh, self funding our way through this. We did a little cast deal with some friends, uh, which gave us a little boost. But we're trying to 
de-risk it as much as possible to get so close to that finish line that you're not taking on loads of other people's money and then it, some, you hit some big roadblock. Yes. So, we've been self, yeah, yeah. so we've been self-funding. Uh, also de-risks it. Yeah. You know, when you're presenting to investors, you can be like, well, we've achieved this X, Y, and Z, all from cash flow, done this, and so on. So it's, it's yeah. Not much more appealing for an investor to come in and investors that you maybe want to yeah. step in. Right? It's also pretty, you know, it's tough. It's complete learning here for us because it's like you're looking at things like corporate structure and management from that perspective, accountability, you know, making sure that there's a board around you that will hold you accountable for the, your actions on behalf of the shareholders and you know it's that sort of shit that you never thought you know you just want to get on and make make whiskey but it is really good and it's really good for us to learn and we've got some uh, some really really good people quite close to us uh, coming into the board who are brilliant have really kind of guided us on that journey so yeah, yeah. that's the, been the main thing that's been the front and this is all that we just get to sit back and drink the whiskey and judge the whiskey and review and critique the whiskey and all of these things sometimes it's nice to take a sip of the liquid and consider all the dull yeah, and the yeah. grind and the boring that's had to go on just in order to make this fantastic, these fantastic stories become it's, actual It's never stories. dull or boring, it's just a grind. Yeah, a grind, <laughs> a grind well, is real. It's yeah. a good learning curve and it's a good education, you know. But, uh, but Dornock sure. Distillery is going to exist. That's, yeah, it stays. Yeah, it's, this Dornick tiny distillery that, that everybody saw the video of a wee bit there, this silly little cheesy intro that I did, it's going to stay. There's going to be a Dornock too. What are you going to call it? Uh, so we, we've not gone public with anything yet. We've got, uh, we just got. Uh, well, now's the perfect time. No, 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 because we, well, <laughs> there, there's, there's still a bit of a debate. There's so many letters from like professional trademark offices. We should not. But this, this is a real, this is a real issue to talk about because for every cool name that you come up with, because you're going to want to, you're going to want to recognise where you are and mark the heritage and things. Guaranteed, somebody's been there before you. They're going to have a trademark register. They're going to come up and say, no, you can't use it. It's not Somebody's just been there before. It's the, like, sounds like. Sounds could, like. Could be interpreted yes. as. Um, and then when you receive a letter saying could be interpreted as from a very expensive law firm or uh, trademark office, and you you sort of go, well, we should probably just... You have to toe the line. Yeah, just just get back on this yeah. one. Even though you know you'd probably win, they'll take you can it and you drag can win it, it but you're going to spit. Oh, baby girl. <laughs> you okay? Oh, we have the youngest... Uh, Thompson and the team just appeared with a wee smile on her face. Um, yeah, so there's a uh, just us, Roy. Wait, wait, no, we can put you in and pour her some of, the, yeah, <laughs> some exactly. of these amazing things. Um, um, no, it's but it's I, I don't I, we I knew that there's no way that they were ready to, to name the distillery. I'm, I'm just gonna um, hey, Simon will be back in five minutes. Um, I just been a wee bit provocative there in order to address the fact that there is a distillery but we still don't know what it's going to be called yet. yeah yeah it's all have a good time i've not got sign here let's get some of these really controversial things up what do you say all right okay so well, what will we start what will we there? start with um i'm going to just throw some things up on screen uh I'll, you read it on this screen actually it'll be more immediate where do we start here's a good one for phil I think fake colour to Scotch malt whisky should come either with a declaration or a prison sentence. Declaration, yeah. Just declare it like Germany. It's fine. It's got to go on the label. It's an additive. Yeah, we've got to, we have to reach that point when people are more conscious about what's coming going into their, their food and their drinks. So, yeah. Go on the we label. have to be a wee bit pragmatic that there's mass market whiskies out there. People yeah. don't understand why these things should change colour from one bottle to the next. We get it. Yeah. But I cannot believe that we we are living in a condition today that there is uh, caramel E150 colouring being added to single malt Scotch whisky. Awful stuff. I've got a, a a bottle this size of it, and if I hold it like this, it stains the glass so badly. I turn it that way, and I've got a perfect square. Okay. It's like a flag, and it's the glass is stained forever. It is awful, awful, awful stuff. This case, and stuff. we're we're drinking this. We, we're told that it's just a lot. Anyway, I'm not going to rant. Yeah, you, get, you, you agree? Yeah, do, do full declaration. I think it doesn't really matter. I think if somebody's picking up a bottle of like blend A in a supermarket in Tajikistan and it's dark, I don't think they really care because it probably costs them like. Five quiz, so um, yeah, pragmatism is hard to come by because I, we're, I be, I'm a geek and I'm an enthusiast and I become very, very precious about this thing. I don't own 
that I buy and I pay for and I've become very involved in it. Whiskey Geek, Ben, it's great to see you, Ben. It's fantastic to welcome you in here. And he's asking why not both, which I think is fair enough, a declaration and a present sentence. Graham Fraser is saying, what are the distilling plans for the old Dornick distillery ah, in the question. future? It's maybe one for Simon or No, not at all. I mean, we're going to carry it. So basically, Dornick's going to be full on, you know, full on production in the same style as we're doing now. So long fermentations, brewer's yeast, uh, slow distillations, heritage grains, preferably floor malted. Um, we have plans to expand that. So there's a small space and you've kind of seen space at the back sure. of the, uh, alongside of the, the castle wall. Um, so there is a space where we'd like to expand into. I think we'd, we'd, we'd probably take it to the region of max 40,000 LPA in that site. And then it would be serviced by kind of be a satellite to the new Dornick distillery. Dornick South is what it's called for ease. Um, yeah. So, like for example, the grain would come from there, the pot ale would go back there, and it would just be a bit of a satellite to that. So, from an infrastructure perspective, it would make our life a lot easier. But and um, keeping it within the walls, the, the castle walls of the um, of the site here, the castle walls, quite amazing to be. Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. It's legit. It's legit. Cool. It's legit as well. Yeah. Yeah. So we can yeah. fortify come the apocalypse. Yes, fortified, <laughs> fortified by a distillery. Yeah. So, I good question. Absolutely. Um, I, I caught that one there, and uh, Rob Smith is saying, as long as the whiskey is good, what's in a name? Well, Dornock South will do for now. Uh, it's mindful of the, the Edredour thing, where the Edredour was going to, and then the big Edredour 2 came along, it was going yeah. to be Balakin, but Balakin had already been made the Edredour, so they weren't allowed, it's just nonsense really, when it, yeah. like, that's a bit silly. Because it was a very, the Edredour 2, if they'd been there, it's a very different distillery to yes. the original Edredour, yes. where it's cast iron mash done and emptied, still kind of emptied by hand. I've never been there, but yeah, yeah. It is, it's pretty unique. Um, so the saying that they will be the same spirit is kind of weird. You know, um, if anything, I can see more value in keeping Edward Dower as a tiny little facility and having the other one as. But Colin Edward Balakin or Balakin or however you would pronounce it, and I am it's okay. I don't, I don't mind it. I get let them say that. So it's anyway. We have Edward Dower one and Edward Dower two. It's simple as that. Way. They're great, but they can also be a bit kind of weird sometimes. Like yeah, the, like uh, weird, yeah. Weird look. But but following the letter rather than the spirit, and it, no no pun intended, right? Um, I've got another wee uh, controversial one for you here. Uh, there are probably too many distilleries today. Now, notice I don't specify Scotch malt distilleries. Not only have we gone mm. from, I did a VPUB about a year ago, don't know if you caught any details from it, but from the year 2000 to the year 2030, do you know how many new distilleries would have opened in that period? 2000 to 2030, globally. 2000 to 2030. And we talking about years. Malt, malt, malt distilleries only in Scotland. Oh, 2000 to 2030. Um, it's going to be, what, like 35 or something like 72. that? 72. Jesus. Wow. So that's work in progress. Uh, things that have us, uh, they, they have planning. And yeah. I would have counted your second distillery in that list, certainly. So something that's funded, it's real, it's a real project and not just a kind of back of a cigarette packet type yeah. thing. 72 well, new distilleries in Scotland. Oof. So yeah. it's in, in 30 years. So we're going to get to the point that, that we're at currently 141 now, today. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot, right? Turn of the century, there were 97, 98, something like that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a different landscape. Kind of ponder on it. I mean, a lot of them are very small production. Some of them are pretty big production. Um, I think, you know, one kind of upgrade at a Diageo facility could dwarf the majority of smaller distilleries, probably like, 30 of those people on that list straight away, you know, one little upgrade at a Diageo plant. So um, I, I remember like hearing, I can't remember if it was on this or something else, but what like Angus's response to this, where he, he would always say, well, like, is there too much wine? Is there too many vineyards? Is there too many wine types? Is there too many people making, you know, great quality wine in France? And it's like, you know, I, I could say the same for Scotland, but I don't quite feel the same way. I do feel it's going to get a little bit kind of, difficult and crowded and um i think diversity through this amongst the spirit is going to be difficult you know to kind of find your unique selling point that isn't just led by marketeers um more than just brand yeah yeah it has to be more than brand yeah, the the, yeah. Li the liquid good has to be good enough you know if you're doing if you're building a new distillery at a minimum it has to be as good as like the you know the modern consistent good quality of whiskey that you get from the likes of the big companies from your diageos etc um and that you know that kind of puts you on par but a smaller scale without you know 
without those networks uh, for supply and for sales, etc. Distribution, yeah. But at least you know you get on par on flavor. But you know to really make it work, you need to truly differentiate yourself, and you know marketing or a special story or location can only take that so far. And you know, my not, well, our tactic and our opinion is you need to truly differentiate yourself in terms of flavor and process, and yeah, you got you got to really hit the mark there. And, you know that that that's that's our plan, that's our strategy, and you see other new wave distilleries going about that in different ways, but still having that same strategy where they're keeping it really interesting with their process, keeping the quality really high. Um, you know, those are the guys who survive and thrive yeah, long term. Yeah. The people who are doing exactly the same as the big boys do, but on a smaller, less efficient, more expensive scale. Well, I have the sense so, that some of the, some of the prompts that I'm going to put up yeah. here are going to run into each other a wee bit based on what you're saying. I think I think that there are. Um, you made a great point. Uh, Glenlivet has gone from 10 million liters to 21 million yeah. liters in the space of 12 or 15 years. Right, quite incredible. That scale of expansion wipes out 20 or 30 of those distilleries yeah. I was talking it's about a very different in the 30 piece. years. Do you know what I mean? It's very so, marketing distribution all over the world. But it all compounds the same sheer amount of what I almost oh, feel like Scotland will start, right, start to sink a little bit and under the weight right, of liquid, right? right? Yeah. And, and it's just that kind of, can we continue this? Anyway, I, I don't want to, because that there are, um, that we are going to overlap lap on some of these things. But one or two that I want to get your take on, and I think what we'll do for a wee bit of fun is we'll, we'll maybe we'll get Sevy in for a wee bit because He's gonna. He's gonna. He's gonna at least want to do some things. facial. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he definitely has. I think on that distillery thing, just for a second, it's gonna be really. Yeah. I think the shelf space. Like how many? I would like to know out of those seventy-two. A, how many are produ in production? So probably fifty to fifty something. Not just the shelf space. Yeah. But the sheer amount of intimidating range, mm -hmm. a com complexity that's on that shelf. So it's not three facings of. 10 different things anymore it, it it's it's 30 facings of one yeah and it's, it's very very complex and i think that what it needs is it needs yeah. enthusiasts and these impassioned people people that can lead people that can coach people that can um help these these kind of things yeah. so yeah. now I'm, I'm i'm missing a drum coming in from glenn my pal glenn glenn duncan good to see you buddy i hope you're keeping well uh, um you said roy the castle and the boys uh bought was cheaper than a house anywhere Sydney Harbour. So Glenn's down in Australia. Hey, I found your shirts recently got down. Hey, seriously looked at buying a castle a few years ago. Have a dram in my favourite place in the world. My glass is empty, Glenn. Uh, otherwise, I would raise a wee kind of. What, what, what so is Glenn Duncan and Aussie? In yes. The, yeah, he's not. Yes. A, he must be Scottish. Scottish heritage, or just giving himself the most Scottish name ever. Well, uh, well, uh, Glenn Duncan. Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, the, uh, yeah, drinking the Rassi. Oh, is that what you're drinking? It is. Would you like some? I, I would like a wee drop of the, the Rassi. <laughs> this is the one that you tried to get me to collect. On it is, yeah. You were going to mule it up from Royal Mall Whiskies for us. Um, so this is the first release this year from um, a group called the Independent Whiskey Boys of Scotland, which we were pretty active pre-COVID. And we uh, bottled, we bought like two Chichi Boos. We've done a Daft Mill. We've done a Highland Park. We've done two Highland Parks, Glen Park was 21, Balishan, um, Aaron, we did yeah. an Aaron back in the day. So we're now kind of reviving it, um, so it's a group of kind of nine bars, all independently owned. One Accord was one of them in Glasgow. One Accord, we've yeah. got the Ensign Ewart in uh, Edinburgh, we've got uh, Derek at the Artisan, the Art Shield in Campbelltown, um, we've got John at Fiddlers in Loch Ness, Malt Room in Inverness, Highlander Inn, um, got Dorna Castle, Orkney Hotel, um, and I feel like I'm probably missing somebody. Um, Apologies, yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's a decent, it's decent coverage if you're coming over to Scotland. Independent bars. These are you're going to be able to go in and only enjoy these by the dram, correct? No, you'll be able to. Some, some you'll be able to sell bottles. Yeah. yeah, so bottles will be for sale. Uh, Royal Mile whiskies are kind of supporting the project, so basically they'll act as intermediary between. You know, we'll arrange the deals with the distillery, then the distillery will supply Royal Mile whiskies, and they're really good because they allow a drawdown, which is really great for any on trade, and um, just to kind yep. of you know, save your cash flow with it. Um, but yeah, this is the first one, and this is really interesting because this is uh, one of their chink chinkapin barrels. 
but this is their intermediate peat, which they've not released. Oh, any. it's just a bit safe, smoky. Yep. Yeah, so it's a, it's basically the when they're moving from peated to unpeated, and they have this kind of series of casts. So we got samples from all of these casts, and we picked one which we, we so liked. Is that unpeated barley, but it's still mixing with peated uh, heads and tails? Yeah, peated things. heads and tails yeah. plus. I never, I, I never got it in the nose, but that's normal for me. I do suffer from peat light. It's, it's ridiculous. It's sometimes not so much, but it often struggle. But as soon as I sipped it. Rassy seems to me like it's coming on to a bit of a, a bit of a rhythm, a bit of it. It's getting into its stride. Yeah. I think the, the spirit is getting much more mature as time goes by. It's starting to become very, very interesting and quite incredible. The, their bottling on site at Rassy as well. But Glenn Duncan, cheers to you. Thank you very much cheers for your drama, friend. Cheers. Sorry you never got to buy this hotel. Right. Another one then. And this is one I specifically want to ask of you, distillers, okay? And I have a theory about this, that this is a topic that you can't really pick up on based on taking two drams and comparing them back to back and saying this isn't, this isn't. But over the course of your experience with whiskies, I want to know your take on chill filtration has little impact on malt whiskey. I'll, I'll, I'll take that one. Um, <laughs> right, okay. okay. So, so, I, um, so to get to the bottom of this, ran some some experience we've got a bottling hall we don't have the ability to chill filter you can't yeah yeah we don't have the equipment for it but in the depths of winter when we get well into the negatives i can combine that with a really fine filter and chill filter um so yeah so what the interesting thing is if you run low very low temperature effectively chill filtration you get this kind of like almost like white gunk on uh, the clicks yep. on the filter i'm like okay well people are all saying what's this taste of and so scrapes on mm -hmm. okay it tastes a bit like the whiskey that was just in it but it's fairly the taste itself fairly is nerds. fairly neutral yeah. uh, but what it does bring to the game the difference that really makes is that it acts as a carrier for other flavors it adds texture, it adds body, it adds mouthfeel, it extends the finish and helps to coat the existing flavours within the whiskey in uh, in your mouth. So all, the, all those um, uh, long chain fatty acids they, uh, yeah. that, you're, that you're taking out, that's resulting in a thinner liquid with a shorter finish and not as good a mouthfeel. Uh, so it's not so much that you're losing flavour by chill filtering, you're losing the this flavor carrier that will give you that mouthfeel and extension of the finish so there is no chill filtration in this whatsoever this is quite a, a big loud filling mouth filling whiskey lots of spice here spice i here, guess yeah. it's from the chink appendix to bring in that lo right. lovely spice here what i used to detect in rassi is quite youthful and a, a, a decent like a heat often with the single cast stuff and the, the uh, distillery exclusives and things like that this is now starting to play as just a nice big warming spice. What age is on this? Do you? Um, I think this is this is just over five years old. See, it's, it's getting a good age now. Yeah, it's getting good. Rassi's great. I mean, I think with the newer guys, they're definitely one of my one of my favourites yeah. for sure, liquid wise. Um, yeah, Rassi, Ardenmerkin are you know kind of at the at the top of the, the new we, wave can we, peak. Can we can we just can we just address something here? We've got Donick Distillery, Thompson Brothers drinking everything but their own whiskey and actively applauding other distillers and producers out there it's not uh it's yeah so anyone collaborative. watching from Spaber, and we're being serious all the time you know we did we were Spaber and fans you are being serious it's not tongue in cheek might have been yeah. taken tongue in cheek by a few people but yeah. it definitely was yeah. 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 yeah it was always it came from that came from john beach so john beach is Fiddler's Loch Ness always he's big Port Ellen's his thing, but he would always find at the end of the night he would be like just want something just to draw like pour a big fat glass of whiskey and just chill out and it was a always relaxed like, whiskey. A relaxed whiskey. Um don't want to get too intellectual, let's just kind of enjoy a drive and that's yeah. just but you're, you're also the point where Fiddler's is in the Highlands as well. Oh yeah, yeah, Loch Ness on the side he's, yeah, he's he's minutes celebrating out. space age, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's found something that he loves. I'm gonna I'm gonna are you just about to pour this? Uh, is, that, is that where you got it? At some point. I, I, yeah, I just realised that we haven't actually drunk any Dornick at all, so we probably should. So we're, we're going on brand now, so let let me do the thing. And it, this... Well, unless... I, I do, I do uh, have a water bottle here. 
I do have a wild card first, if you would well. rather. Oh, wild cards. I like yeah, wild cards, like, yes. I don't know. I'm, I'm limited as to what I can currently say about this, but I can give the overarching thing, but I can't say the location. So, so what you're going to do is let me try this blind and then not be able to tell me if I've got anything. No, I can tell you the nature of the project, but I can't okay. tell you um, the place where it occurred. I okay. guess. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll just do a quick wee one because you know not everyone digs the new make. But I, um, one of the things we've been playing with recently is collaboration projects, where we've been going to. Oh, other we, start, we started three years ago with the Art American ones of our. Yeah, but this, this, this or the or the Strathairn ten years ago. Yeah, um, but the, yeah, this is. Um, I did a project with another distillery, possibly a new wave distillery. Uh, this is just a new make from that. Um, but it's basically putting elements of what we've learned at Dornick uh, and layered that on top of their production while being respectful of the house style. Uh, and it turned out pretty good for uh, for new make. Uh, but yeah, I had a little chat with the guys that, well, don't say too much about it until X number of years down the line when you've got finished liquid to do something with. But, so, this, so this is still remains today very this is new make this is just yeah, this, yeah th this is this is this is new make from yeah. a distillery where we did a production collaboration we designed a production that was a little like a dornick spin on what they do while being respectful of their house style but uh it's quite, it's quite it's quite it's quite mulchy it's quite farmy it's bursting <sighs> with green apple green apple skin a very new makey but when I first put my nose in it, I just got a big blast of wet hay and farmyard and yeah. So we've got. Is there like, anything? What is what is cool about the collaboration? What's the? Is it a, is it a specific? Yeah. So th so this so this one in particular, um, we wanted to extend fermentation times, and the way we did this is we utilised their uh, Christmas shutdown time. So the last thing to go in the washbacks. So you you're in someone else's distillery. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you work, work, you working with them. Uh, this is this is what this should be. This yeah. is cool. Sorry. So so we used we used their uh, their winter shutdown time uh, to run extra long fermentations without disrupting their own production. Uh, we used a mixture of their house peated barley and some heritage varieties of barley. What did we use for this one? Plymouth Archer. Um, so it's 50-50, their, their, their house peated barley and 50% uh, flow malted plumage archer, I'm pretty sure. Primary fermentation was with a mixture of propagated brewer's yeast and spent brewer's yeast. Um, uh, and then that was followed up with their house strain of yeast after, I think it was 48 hours, it was a bit of an insurance policy. Uh, and yeah, the resulting This is right up Savvy Street. Yeah, the resulting liquid was uh, pretty it's, interesting. It's... Uh, when we walked into a baker's, there's a fantastic baker in Pitlock at Seven I found today. It's just called the bakery. It's right opposite the old mill inn. Fantastic place to go into. But when you walked in the door, they opened the door, there was this big blast of baked goods and things. It's here. But that apple thing, the take, one of the takeaway sweets that I got because we were loving eating there so much was a, a, a Danish pastry filled with apple in the middle. And that is, this is just so reminiscent of that. Yeah. So um, just... We've got a few, a few of these kind of projects lined up. But you said peated, semi-peated, or yes, part yep. peated. It's not. It's peat blank. I'm just struggling. You, you're getting smoke and peat from this. Yeah, 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 it's there. It's there, but it's uh, it's quite subtle in this. Um, a lot of that's down. You know, peat, the the peating level on the barley is one thing, but the expression of the peat is quite often down to where you make your cut points. So certain some distilleries will run. Uh, uh, it's kind of a deeper tails cut uh, to express more of the more of the peatiness, and that's that's been a bit more of a, a bit more of a modern development really to kind of play into that caricature of peatiness. You don't find that quite so much with a lot of the older styles of peated whiskey. They wouldn't really extend that cut to express more of the the peat. Uh, but you certainly off see notes, it. impurities, thing, undesirables, all of those things that we take once you've got into the tails. And music. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's certainly more of a modern thing where they widen widen that cup mm -hmm. to express uh, more of the peat because a lot of people just love that big peat smash. So but, you're already excited about this, and it's brand new, it's still clear. Yeah, I, th I thought I thought I thought it was uh, relevant to some of the stuff we were tasting tonight, I guess. But uh, yeah. 
at SIF. And then we've got a few projects like that. Without up. giving that too much away. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to doing more of that sort of thing because it's so, so much fun going to go off and play with other people. I just, I love the idea that there's there's an open attitude to collaboration, to feeding off each other, for the pool of knowledge to increase, for everybody to have fun with it and all take something away from it. It's, you're not you're not creating new products. You're not creating new business models or anything like You're just having fun. Oh, yeah. And you're doing it at a scale that yeah and you know you know there, there, there's a few there's a there's a good few we, one we like you know we like to do these kind of things because it's fun but also you know you can learn stuff from you know as we're moving to bigger scale we need to learn more about production on larger scale to make sure we're not really missing anything major find, find out the way other people do things share some of the stuff that you do as well in case they yeah, find something yeah. most valuable and you know there's some other points there as well when we're mixing in uh, different elements of Dornick style production with other people's production is, you know, we're also look at, thinking about our new distillery um, and, you know, Dornick is no holds barred production, very expensive to make and it's going to continue to be that sort of crazy over the top. Um, whereas the new distillery is going to be a bit more of a balance where we can't make Dornick on a large scale because we'll go bankrupt. So we need to selectively pick and choose elements where you've got those kind of uh, sweet spots and balance points and part of playing with other people and bringing in elements of what we do in Dornick and mixing it with some of the things they do is to try and find those sweet spots where you know okay you're going to get something that will be lower yielding than standard modern production but not that much yeah. lower and it'll cost a bit more but not that much more and you know Dornick's you know it's very expensive to make it's kind of pricey when we sell it. New distillery, we want to bring a lot of that in while still hitting back end. Three days to fill a barrel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when, when, you, when you're at the back end of that, you want to be able to come out at competitive prices that are in line with your peers or, you know, you need to make a no-brainer. You need to hit And just, just a, a wee shout out for what, what Phil's saying, beyond the collaboration thing, when the when that donut product does come out, uh, the price has been the same, five years old, six years old, seven years old, eight three years old, four years old, five years right. old, six years there's, old. Each time there's there's new donut product coming out, the price has been the, the bottle you can yeah. buy. For. I mean, we, we did. Listen, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna make sure my pal gets one of these as well. I'm gonna bring in a, a chair. Bex, I'm gonna bully you into joining us a wee bit later too. If, if you're up for it, we're still here. But Sam, come in and enjoy some of the. I know you. Um, we're already. Yeah. Yeah, um, there's nothing worse than that jet lag. Are, you, are you doing okay? You doing okay? Well, I've got a couple of, I've got a couple of more kind of let, let's see. Uh, doing super well. Fun things, and the reason I wanted, the, the reason I wanted to bring, and I don't want to dwell on this too much because I know that I've done V pubs on it in the past, and I will cover V pubs on it in the future. And there's a much bigger thing than the fact that the Thompson Brothers are independent bottlers. But, but Sevi brought something up, and, and we're discussing this in the car and things. What's the future? As Sev's question was, what's the role um, of in the future of the independent boss? Like, I am a massive independent. We all arrive fan. in the cool de sac of Indies, yes, don't we? We just end up there. We it's my jam. Yeah. So yeah. What's yeah. the future for yeah. the independent yeah. bottling? I think I think the future is good. It was looking kind of ropey for a while as there was too much dumb money coming into the the secondary cask markets, the brokerage markets. Uh, the big companies were selling really well, so they were reducing what they were putting out to um, independent bottlers and blenders. And you know, for a while, with some of it, we, we, we deal direct with some of the biggest companies. And we've got blending contracts for certain makes that we use for like uh, SRV5, the likes of the Sullen there. And so we could only take like what we were or contracted for. Uh, but now, you know, some share prices have been like going down, the reality's kicking in a bit, and all of a sudden, mm -hmm. Um, availability of liquid, availability of new fillings has, has increased again. On, on further down the chain in, uh, in the brokerage markets, you're not seeing a drop in the listed prices, but you're uh, seeing some of the good guy brokers are. Yeah, some of the good, good guy brokers, brokers are, are being realistic with their, more realistic with their prices. Uh, but yeah, it took quite a while for prices to continue again. Yeah, there's still well, there's, there's still a shitload of dumb money and. In whiskey at the moment and in casks in particular um, and there's still a lot of shady players they don't seem to be have yeah. flushed out yet yeah, i mean yeah, the people yeah. in the cask investment thing 
big time. We're, we're just getting a wee bit fed up that, that, that's, every time you open your Instagram or whatever. You, yeah. um, that's going to become a deluge. You know, it's really going to be a big issue. Uh, there is people doing a lot of work. Uh, you know, I like what Mark's doing and Philippe and even Blair's doing a really good job, Blair Bowman. And it's really, it's good to see them doing that in their spare time. And it's obviously in their interest. Calling them out, calling out the fake hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's obviously in their interest. I mean, they are brokers, a couple of them are brokers, but they're actually, yeah, there's a lot of fake actors, a lot of really disingenuous players out there who are going to cause major headaches for the industry. And I think both, you know, I noticed, I think, Blair shared something with, um, oh God, what's our fun MSP who gets, who's good crack and gets shouty? Um, no. Um, MSP? Yeah, the guy who's based up here, remember he did, he was all, all, all against the DRS stuff. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, Ewan. Ewan, Fergus Ewan, yeah. And he was talking about um, cast investment stuff at the Scottish Parliament, which was good to see. It was really good to see. Oh, wow, yeah. That's because because the Parliament, that, that's, yeah. that is, that's well, well, hopefully yeah that, that, well, well, well actually maybe that around. might not be that yeah. effective actually but hope you would hope yeah, so they didn't pan around to an empty room you know, like, uh, <laughs> we do try our very very best to stay away from politics and the people oh yeah no, but, but it's good he's talking yeah, about yeah, it yeah, yeah. you know that's well, a very and, and I think, line of, yeah i think the advertising advertising agencies got involved a wee bit in things but it needs to be there needs to be something much more holistic protecting the concept because it's not just going to affect Scotch whiskey, but right now it's, it's particularly acute in Scotch whiskey. Yeah, I think it's also bad in Ireland. I think what's going on in Ireland with a lot of new distilleries starting and getting funding through a lot of these guys, yeah. uh, using them for kind of like, you know, for stock funding, is been is going to cause issues. And for credibility issues. to try and... and, and yeah. It's, it's, it is a shame. I, I don't want to be around when the fallout happens. I hope that when it does happen that the... The things that are lost are the things that we didn't need in the first place, and the things that are preserved are the things that's going to look after the long term health of yeah. whiskey generally, but certainly scotch. So I think it's a shame. Yeah. I am encouraged by what you've said about yeah. Sebi's question that there is some sense coming back in. Yeah. I, I overheard a conversation where we were setting up today of you getting offered some casks that you actually want. To yeah, really I, thought, I thought that, you know they were just on the about. edge of being. They were they were they were on the edge of being reasonably priced, um, which has been unlike anything I've seen recently. And, you know, you could actually do the sums and be like, oh, okay, that's not terrible on the shelf. That's encouraging. Um, that's encouraging. It it's encouraging for us all. But there's good people out there. There is still good people out there. You go in and you see an indie, one of your favourite indies, nine year old or something, and you're walking up to it knowing that there's a good chance it could be up to close to a hundred pounds or something for a nine year old oh, product or something. And it's like just, that. it's just, it's just. You're just, you have to... I mean, I think that's okay if you're talking about like something like a, a small, tiny wee distillery that's producing great quality liquids, people like Rassi, small independents, but when it's like, I don't see coming from like a big spirit factory, then it's a little bit unusual. You know, you know, it doesn't make sense. I think I do have this idea of a V-pub where we have almost like an independent forum or something. We get we get the Thompson Brothers on, we get Mark Vaughan, on, eh, we get we get Adelphi on, we get just everybody and just kind of... Yeah, we can host it here. Let's close the castle for the night. We close the castle for the night. <laughs> Film it. If I do that, it bar. it's a two-night stay. It's not yeah, a one-night stay. Like, we can do it in the bar. If you come up in so, November or something, that'd be great. So just that's one, an, I, I guess, like the, I, the follow-up, because this is the only kind of thing that I'm kind of going on. With the idea of what we're seeing just now of, I imagine, I can only imagine that with some of the distilleries, some of maybe the, the, the bigger players, it's harder to get some of those casks maybe and as time goes on, as the, the kind of demand for whiskey increases, as population gets bigger and such and the like, are you starting to see, or do you think you will start to see more of the kind of the, the smaller distillage or maybe the newer ones starting to put things into, into or do you think yeah. that? Yeah, it's, yeah it's, they, already they, it's already happening. happening. Yeah, okay. I mean, there's a lot of guys that, in their, you know, a couple of years ago, if you knocked on the door and said, can I buy cast, they'd be like, no, no chance. And now it's like, oh, we don't. they're knocking uh -huh. on our door or knocking on other independent bottlers' doors saying, would you like to do something that would be good for us and we see value in that um which kind of gives you a little bit of an indication um on the market and sales yeah. and you get that kind but, of first two first year kind of boom and then what happens but, thereafter. but not just that if you're new new way of distillery and you're producing you know 200 250 000 hourly that's a lot of bottle of whiskey in the future you know as you know okay you've got your own channel you're not you know it's hard to sell all of that yourself you need other things to help you move that, such as you know, stocks, stock to blending, stock to independent bottlers, 
uh, you know, 250, you know, once, once that reaches its equilibrium point where the amount you're selling each year is the amount you're yes, restocking, of course. that's a huge amount of bottles out to market every year. And I think that eventually dawns with like, ah, oh, we kind of built up to or close to our equilibrium yes. point. We need to we need to move more liquid. Who moves liquid? Oh, independent bottlers. Oh, sure. blenders. So you're seeing, you know, some of the new wave guys now engaging with the blenders, where you know you would never yeah. have been able to get their liquid for blending, or engaging in swap stocks with big companies oh. for blending. And that's safer for them because their brand is less compromised when it's out there in the wild because it's it's been used to make a different product. It's not. Yeah. It's not a case yeah. of buying a clean leash and selling it as a clean leash and trading on the clean leash name or something. It's, yeah. It's a kind yeah, of safe and, and so some of the new wave guys, their their liquid would make great blending stock. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I think that's that's exciting for me as well because it, it means that like you, I love the the aspect of the independent bottlings and the fact that you can sometimes get a distillery where you you may not necessarily connect with the the kind of original bottlings or the distillery bottlings, and then you can really connect with it. Like for me, uh, Dalmore, if you can get a hold of it, if it's ever kind of even bottled by cat heads or, or anywhere do you know what i mean that you can get or even the SMWS ones you can find some amazing kind of things that i would never necessarily personally it's just yeah, a personal associate thing. with that yes go with that yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you can get some and you think wow I, I can't believe that this is the spirit that could be or well again that's their decision what they do with it but it's just such an amazing spirit and you think wow but so so many distilleries yes. i think uh, what they make and what is actually presented through independent, uh, sorry, through official bottlings is not always, uh, yeah, what, what they're capable of, you know, all contortion but more and things like that. There's mm -hmm. actually one here you can maybe just, uh, uh, I think I might have deleted it because I felt that I didn't want, but it was very much on that theme. And I think it is wonderful that we have independent bottlers who really care about the distillery, the people that are there, what the liquid they actually make, and try to represent, regardless of the cask that has been matured in, or how they, they try and show what that distillery can actually make. The, the official bottlings don't represent, I think, is, is really unfortunate. Um, so there, anyway, I've got a, a controversial one for the last one. Not really. Tubes, boxes, and packaging. Trash or treasure? Um, well, we, we don't really keep any. Um, all our independent bottlings go without boxes, tubes, packaging. I think for Dornick, we kind of felt we needed to to do something for it, so it gets a pretty plain cardboard box. With a, a wee with brown a, cardboard box yeah, with a with sticker a, on it. Yeah, 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 a bit, yeah, with a um, kind of a sort of duplicate of the label on it. Uh, we kind of felt we had to do that. I could easily live without boxes uh to be honest if people start going absolutely not so this one comes in a wee brown box yeah yes. it comes in a wee brown box um and what about the stuff you're buying for the bar what about the stuff that you're trying and oh, the the things? Things. we with rassi we decided not to do boxes for the independent whiskey bar scotland yeah. which is yeah. atypical yeah. for rassi most rassi comes out in a kind of a box yeah. it's a wee bit it's constructed a wee bit like this right with a kind of the, the window on it so you so that's Without a box. Yeah. We thought yeah. most of them are going to bars. Or they wouldn't, you know, the on trade's not interested in your box if anything was paying the ass. Yeah. But we, we, have, we have spoke to other uh, other distilleries where they're looking to move away from packaging, but then certain markets they're in, there's like, so we, need, we need the box. I quite like the Nicolian model where they've got a beautiful tube. But it's um, you know they basically charge you for it. It's like yeah, if you want the tube, oh. it's an extra. I, I thought that was a stroke of genius, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can, yeah, this is the price of the bottle. Oh, do you want it in a gift box? Yeah, that's not a difficult concept it, to understand, it, right? It's easy it's, to manage on your direct sales, but when you start looking through import through retail and sure. imports, it becomes a much more difficult proposition. You've got to have a a, a case of box. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. I mean, if, boxed. if you're if you're if you're a long term collector and you like to long term stash bottles, you, know, you, you need to keep them away from uh, direct sunlight. And I guess a box can help with that. But yeah, when you go to a bar, you just trash all your boxes. You don't really, you know, you run out. You know, you start putting them on display. It starts eating up shelf space, which you'd rather have more bottles in. So uh, very quickly, it becomes so the, they all just go in the bin or the decorative for the bar. It's just kind of going. Oh, that was uh, something that we had from. X amount of time ago, and yeah. you see that that most of the places that you, you go, certainly in Glasgow, that the boxes are yeah. decorating the bar, yeah. from bottles of the yesteryear. Yeah. Again, it comes back to you know, the important things: that what's in what's in the liquid, uh, what's in that glass. Uh, you know, I don't know. There may be a little bit something you know, a box 
that's functional, simplistic, protects. The guys at uh, White Pit, White Boutique, uh, yes. I like their one, which is kind of like a combination box slash shipping protection thing. Uh, I thought that was that was very clever. There's lots of innovative, innovative, and I think whatever you do, whether you're going to be innovative about it, whether you're going to be kind of um, uh, pragmatic about it and say, look, we need something to, to protect the whiskey or whatever, keep it modest, keep it appropriate. I think there's just too much. As you become more and more of an investing enthusiast, you start to become suspicious of overly gilded, mm, yeah. uh, overly exaggerated and you're, and packaging. You're, you're paying for it at the end of you the know day. You know it's costing. You know that big heavy stopper that could break a toe if you dropped it. That's cost a lot of money. You, the, 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 obviously, if you're going to have a specially shaped bottle, then fine. Maybe if it's for the next twenty years or something, then great. But not every di different release is going to be anyway. I trash all my packaging. All the whiskey is left open because I love the colour of it. I like to see the level where it's at, all of it. And I appreciate that you've got to keep it out of the next sunlight and all those great things. But for me, trash. I would, I would trash it all. Jimmy Legg is saying, damn you for taking so long to bring oh, Sylvia in. He Jimmy, loves you. He, he loves does. You. What, what, I, I had the absolute honour of meeting Jimmy um, this year. Uh, on fight it was last year wasn't last it? it was year last, last year sorry in september leg fest yes at leg fest leg and fest. it really was jimmy leg an is a man who once declared i love scotch i love scotland i'll never, I'll never make it there i'll never see it then eventually through years of being in the community and participating in all this he said okay i'm on a drive i'm going to get there i'm going to get there and he booked up and he came over we held a festival jimmy. and we named it after jimmy yes. <laughs> a lot of pressure on his shoulders it was uh, him and his wife. pressure on his leg. Uh, yeah, yeah. A lot of pressure on his leg. <laughs> yeah. like so uh, where, where's Jimmy Leg? Uh, Nova Scotia. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. yeah it's super cool. Uh, yes. A great, a great chat. Really, really nice to meet him. Yeah. And honestly, it was like uh, as emotional. Tears were shed. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, was yeah, such yeah, an emotional really. moment because yep. we've always conversed on the uh, on, on the, the chat and stuff. Yep. But to actually put a uh, face to the chat was fantastic so but really jimmy uh, so many other people in the, in the chat had so much color so much life so much vibrance to everything when you're able to manifest that in real life it's quite incredible and ian bruce has bought us a drum as well great chat in a fantastic location with great guests we can yeah we can when can we help sorry saying when can we help out by investing in a dornock cash share Ah, casks eh? well we, we we don't want to yeah, we don't we don't want to do anything uh it's yeah, we don't want to do anything for the new distillery too early. I know we did first time round, but we're, you know, we kind of want to be at the point. The long term where, admin of such a project is tricky, right? Yeah. It's not been too bad, to be honest. Um, where the, have you been? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the person who deals with all, with all no, the. Uh, all right, we're doing the cask sales. Okay. Well, right. Sounds it's, like Roy's volunteering yeah, to, yeah. to get that up for you. Right. It's all, yeah, all the spare time I have. They're all, they're all, they're all, they're all, they're all whiskey people. Yeah. And 99% of them are. Free. Yeah, literally 99% of them are awesome. And even the 1% who are a slight pain, they're not being bad. They're just yeah. quibbly or awkward. Yeah. Um, and they're not that bad. But yeah, which, you know, so, you know, at least. You know, 99 out of 100 people have just been amazing and even the people who aren't super amazing haven't been that bad really they've, yeah. they've, they've done pretty well at the far end as whiskey well. does a good job of attracting good people mm -hmm. i would say that thanks that you looked at me there i appreciate that yeah. Yeah, thanks <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I, I mean it with sincerity my guy i do let's, re let's raise a wee glass to that because i think we're gonna we're gonna roll into closing things out with a wee with a wee fun quiz at the end Roy, you yeah. have got a wee question here from everyone Everyone, right, that's a good one actually. Can you get the guys to talk about the different skills for blending casking someone else's juice versus making your own whiskey? And a wee drama in from Tim Dorfast Whiskey as well. Just a wink and a nod would uh, would would do on my previous one. Would would do on my previous? Did I miss? Yeah, is Donner is that like named Donner Pass Whiskey is Tim? So is that, do you know the Donner Pass in the States? Is that like named after the, like where the Donner Party ate each other or like? Or consumed, you know, the kind of no, don't, travel out. Well, I don't know. I wonder where the eight could ask them. Yeah, so it was, it's like it was true. Sure it's the famous like donor party that got lost on the way to California. Do you know, I must, it is that's oh, exactly yeah. what it is. Donor Pass, then so, it's yeah. a really high, I think it's mostly high abandoned and desolate now. Yeah, you'll, you'll, I'm sure you'll tell us. So, so there's the a reason there. Donor Pass Whiskey is he keeps the place clear of snow. Oh, and he looks after the team. Right, okay. he keeps it all clear of snow in the in the winter. I believe. Ah. I managed to. I was lucky enough to meet Tim and Hammett hanging out with them in Glasgow a couple of years ago. But 
I'm glad I didn't say it was anything to do with a kebab, which uh, I was a wee bit worried. Yeah, <laughs> nothing to do with German donor kebabs, absolutely. Cheers, Tim. Thanks to you, buddy. Thank you. Mm. So, Chris Everwind's question talking about blending your own liquid versus blending other folks. Um, well, oh, Dornish really great to blend. It's, it's lots it's of it's potent yes. power here all of a sudden. My goodness. Yeah, just grabbed some odds and sods from the shelf on the way out. But I like just, your odds and sods. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty well, terrific. Yeah, well, because we're, we're bottling. So Jacob used to work for us, started up with us. So he uh, went off to US, then went off to a uh, new malt distillery in Portugal. Then he's just returned back to US uh, in advance of not the North US, the other year. Oh, the guys who do two down, projects. Downport, yeah. yeah. Stuff like that. That's uh, the they're building a single malt thing. Uh, but our guys get to do their own project every year for their own cask. Uh, and so Jacob did kind of a bigger batch and split it with us, uh, where he did local barley, did all the maltings himself, locally cut peat that he cut himself. Uh, floor malted up at the old Gosby Mill, which is an old kind of heritage mill with a water wheel, etc. Now, where we went really wrong with this one, and um, it's the absolute lowest yielding whiskey we've ever had, is um, he used the water driven stone mill uh, <laughs> to mill the barley. Wow. Um, that's, that's and, going to the end degree. Right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> and the the results are Arch. yeah, the, the results are delicious. But if you saw the if you saw Price. the you saw that, yeah. If you saw that, if you saw the figures on it, uh, yeah, it would. You know, so, sometimes we dip into like early twentieth century yield figures, uh, like very early twentieth century yield figures, which are way off what they are today. This is kind of more like something to be respectable. Sixteenth century farmyard, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yield uh, figures. Um, it tastes good. <laughs> Two bowls of red. It does taste very, very, very <laughs> but, good. Yeah, we took some yeah. samples recently because I think one of the casks we're going to bottle for him in July. He's going to take his percentage and then we're going to sell the rest on the ballot system but i, I was super nice. happy with the liquid you know not amazed by the yeah it's very just fragrant yeah, really but, very yeah but the guys every year get their chance to go above and beyond for their own thing do whatever well i say whatever they want you know i've very much got a box of what i consider acceptable so like you know no campaign yeast it needs to be within that window of what we're gunning for with traditional, uh, Scotch. traditional Scotch styles, and you know, there's certain you know, certain things that were available, not available to them back then. So uh, they've got anything we can do within this box, however crazy. Oh, so we are still it. talking about boxes. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh yeah. Sorry about that. Still get that up. But this 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 turned out this turned out great in the end. Fantastic. Um, I was saying yes, but there are ski resorts there now. Ah, okay. <laughs> It's obviously high enough. It's the, yeah. it's not to You've be got there. one there for Phil and Simon. Are you at the Whiskey Fringe? Oh, sorry, we never answered the question about blending. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, we're, we're yes. Sorry, we're on to the next yeah. one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, Simon, Simon went on a tangent. Yeah, sorry, yeah, tangent. It. It's, like, it's that thing. Uh, right? Yes, Dornick is very good to blend with. It works very well. We do our Sutherland blended malt, which is hopefully going to be a bit of a kind of solid product moving forward. It's going to be a mainstay. Kleinleash, Dornick, Teaspoon Brora works really well. Dornick. Does to whiskey what Klingleach does to whiskey for other blenders. It really brings out a lot of fruitiness, loads of texture, loads of mouthfeel. Um, works really well. Yeah, um, we're, we're, we're Dornick, and you know, some Dornick solo can be like too condensed, too extreme. Uh, once you start cutting that with other liquid and just using it like a seasoning on top, it's really, really good for blending with by adding in you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 percent. Uh, so things like like the Sullen, hopefully we're you know, we're, we're working towards running that as like a long term thing to keep yeah. doing. We're, well. we're lucky we're in a region yes. where you know it's we're a massive region with really low population density and three pretty or or two epic distilleries in Brora. Yeah, you know Brora and Klein Leash and the old school Brora, um, and now we are really you know really privileged to be part of that. Kind of some yeah. distillery trio, um, which is pretty cool to be such a huge region and only have three distilleries. Um, I have to say, the appeal of this is huge. Um, I've, the only time I've ever tried this is by traveling to Germany to Limburg to try some. Um, I walked into the shop today 
and the only thing I was scanning for was the bright yellow label with the fire. Well, yeah. we're actually doing a, we've done a micro batch this year, uh, Jack Splendid Up for Limburg, 120 bottles. And it's a slightly different label. It ties into Limburg and it'll be for sale at Limburg. Don't hang about. 120 Don't bottles. Hang okay, so there. Uh, Ernie, your first spot. I have to keep a wee bit of pocket number. money for when I go That's over to it. Germany. And maybe, again, the only the only way to get my hands on, well, I either come up here and ask for a tram of it behind the bar, or head out to Germany and pick up a bottle. It's, great stuff. It's a great blend. It's like what, like, I'm being very fortunate to have tried quite a few for the, the bottles from the bats and stuff, but that's one, that's the first time today that I've tried that. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. that perfect mix of modern, yeah, yeah. nostalgia, uh, kind of nod to the heritage, the, mm -hmm. the trio of distilleries that you're talking about and everything. You can see the draw of that and the way that you've pitched that labeling and things as well to do yeah. this. We, we, we're going to do some at birth blending as well with this so we're gonna we've got some uh clean leash lined up to blend at birth with the spirit it straight into yeah, the let it let it mature integrate from birth um jack's been so jack puts together a lot of these supplement blends with me and um things like the oxidization uh the slow dilution and the the vatting uh, the resting period so i think he was talking about blending the next batch of sutherland now to probably release in september so we're thinking about integrating it now and letting it rest in cask, um, which is hopefully going to make a better product. You know, the longer mm. you take the better. Any plan for the four-hour drive up to actually be able to get my hands on it or build up my, my credibility with, with the folk here? Let's charge our glasses yes. and close, bring things to a close. If you're up for it, if everyone's up for it, please stay with us for a week because at the end there's a bit of a Dornick theme. There's certainly a home advantage for these guys, but that's a huge pressure because if they get it wrong, they're left with a wee bit of a red face. I think they'll be, they'll be fine. Yeah, Remember the quiz at the end is always good fun. It's always multiple yeah. choice, um, but I'd like to I'd like to raise a wee glass. And yeah, just, uh, can I, um, are, we, are we moving on to like the, the final scene? Is this what's going on? It's exactly what's happening. Can, can I, I uh, is, there, is there an interruption before the final can scene? I open a bottle? It's been sitting for sure. for a you, week. You can, you can absolutely open a bottle. Oh, shall, yeah. we, shall we bring in a pal, Bex, yeah, bring for, for this, for the, for the bottle opening? Come on, Bex. Yeah, bring your seat around for Try not to bump my head. You cover next to me. Maybe we grab this first since it's on the go. These chairs are never going to fall through the lake. Sound of the ride on this. I'm not even going to have a to bring my hand. I'm so keen to try this to you. It's a wee bit there. Um, we'll, we'll wait till we're settled before oh, we get there. Oh, we've got another one as well. Let's get this open too. So much to open. This is, uh, this is super, super new. Like, they only just allowed or decided to put Kilkerran in the cage. Right, really? This is. I, I tell you what, Seth, if, if you are at four out of five, or five out of five, four out of five are better, at the halfway point, We'll crack this at the halfway point. Okay. We'll and, if, and, and if we don't, and we'll just crack and it at the end. <laughs> and if he's not a four out I'll crack it at the halfway oh, point. That's <laughs> Um, so what do, we, what do we have here? Oh, sorry, so, sorry. well, I'd, I'd, I'd probably like to say Bex has not slept since she came in from LA. Hi, guys. Very yeah. jet-lagged over here. Bex from the LA Whiskey Club. Yep, LA Whiskey Club. Los Angeles, right? Yeah, you just arrived cool. today. Yes. Only stayed for one night. Same yes. yes. Yeah, it's okay. You come in if you your fix at Dornock, right? Yes, you, have, you have to come to Dornock every time yeah. you come to Scotland, I think. What's the size of the LA Whiskey Club now? How many members do you have? You have 75 members. Wow, that's yeah. great. That's, yeah. a decent, that's a decent size club. It's a pretty good yeah. size Central LA, downtown LA. We meet in downtown, yeah. yeah. Um, but members are all over the place. Down that's south, Orange up. County, all the way up to the valley. We like to drive in LA, you know? But let's raise a wee glass to all the members of the LA Whiskey Club. LA Whiskey, LA whiskey Club. club. Oh, what, do we, what do we have here? Oh, uh, do, uh, it's Doris Cask 130 that just went on, uh, oh. finished on ballot this morning, so. Which cask one? Uh, one Dorney cask, one thirty, five years old. Uh, yeah, just um, we bottled it this week actually, and then straight onto ballot with, a, with another couple. So it's three hundred and ninety days worth of production mm -hmm. sold already. <laughs> well, <laughs> you might be like I, I was very fortunate to to win said ballot, so you may we may have a bottle coming home with us. Maybe that we can maybe split. I Hopefully, don't just bring them for these good ones. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll see how the how the the ballot gods have mm. have. 
done for us. That's Anna and Barry. Oh, oh yeah. Sorry, yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, good luck, everyone. Thank you. You know the drill by now for staying for the quiz at the end. I'll get the lighter. that bottle. Yo, is this the one you wanted to open? This one I want to open. So much whiskey this year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm having a nice night. Um, so the, the quiz at the end is, is always multiple choice, just having a bit of fun. Uh, even if you know nothing about whiskey, there's still a good chance you're going to score uh, yeah, um, I said one a third because yeah, it's uh, a lot of choice of three. There is a Dornick theme tonight, but I've, I've put in another few uh, difficult ones. Remember, it always starts off quite easy, gets harder towards the end, and we tend to finish on an ass hat very, very deliberately. Oh, of course, mm -hmm. and for the folks that are playing along. And the, the Rachel Riley. Yes, yes. Right. Well, I, I, I know, I've got a good chance of getting 10 out of 10 if right, I in fact, actually, why not get 10, sorry. Oh, well, it doesn't always happen. That's not fair. Um, so everyone's going to play a wee bit long. Uh, the, the audience always drops off at the end. Listen, if you've if you've gone away and uh, you're not participating in the quiz, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you for witnessing uh, our fun and uh, sharing some <gasps> remarkable whiskies. But also hearing a remarkable story of passion and everything. Listen, thank you for joining us, everybody. Cheers. Good luck on the quiz. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thanks. The pass mark is usually five out of ten. As I say, it starts off quite easy. It gets trickier after that. I feel confident about, about <laughs> it. I don't know if my jet lag like is going to help or harm me right now. Yeah. Question one. It's really a fishy. A fishy Which of these out. distilleries lie north of Dornock? Oh. A, Eight Doors, B, Klein Leash, or C, Wolfburn, Poker Face, please. Which of these distilleries <laughs> lie north of Dornock? Eight Doors Distillery, Klein Leash, or Wolfburn? Did you write these questions? I wrote these yeah. questions, <laughs> yes. Poker Face, please. Uh, I'm going this. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. All three, Okay. A, B, C. I would say that's the, the best. Follow the crowd, Bex. Yes. Do what the community <laughs> does. Follow the crowd. Look at them. ABC, 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 okay. ABC. Yeah. Indoors is right up at the top. Klein Leach is about an hour north of here. The real form is up somewhere close to the I, I, was, I was a bit worried that he was actually going proper due north in case we yeah, had to yeah, get that. That's what I was thinking. Like 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 I'll say again. It starts easy. <laughs> it gets harder. This is just to make sure that you're feeling comfortable it's and nobody goes it's home with a zero. Nobody goes home with nothing on the real Question two, oh, what's plastic. true about the Ardbeg spectacular release? The one that's just about to release, be released for this year's for shield. What's true about it? I'm going to give you three facts. I want you to tell me what's true. A, it's fully matured in port casks. B, it has a double digit age statement and 110 pounds RRP. Or C, it's released from next week. Ooh. Which of those statements is true about Ardbeg's Fischiel release this year? And they're calling it spectacular. Uh, listen, this has only just dropped in the last few days, the news of this yeah. thing, but they made a big I saw, splash. I saw a picture, but I didn't read the details, so I'm going to guess. I'm I, 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 I think I may have read the details, but I might not have be, I've read a bit of it, but it might yeah. be wrong. You might want to help them. There's a there's a dram face thing there to suggest that if you read oh. dram face, you would already know this. But there's also a banana skin there. So don't necessarily be going with your gut. Have a wee think about the, it. The banana skin being the fact that trip you up quite early yes, on. it should. It sounds like it's legit, but it's actually wrong. Mm. If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. The bit I'm thinking is: is it fully matured in port casks, okay. or is it maybe not? Fully I'll give matured you a countdown to show you what you're committing to. Three, two, one. I'll go for the port cask. I'll go for the podcast. Yeah. Oh, Release from next week. Beauty, beauty. All you had to avoid there was B. Fill the oh. podcasts. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Release from next week. Absolutely. Go um, team. Yes. One hundred and ten pounds RRP is correct, is but it? there is no age statement. All right, this not age stated. So I'm B. surprised it was one hundred and ten pounds. I yes. thought that was <laughs> going to be filthy. This, this whiskey is filthy. It's like oh, drinking okay. manure. Okay. I, I don't, I, I, it's not what I've got in the glass. No, no, no but you, I've still got a uh, No, I mean, like, it's, it no, smells yeah, you've got like, like a little bit of manure. Glass, if that's the right thing. Liver oil. Salmon. We're too busy sharing drams to pay any attention to. Sorry, Let's roll oh, into I feel this required a new glass for that. Sorry, I just, because I've seen what's on the label, which is oh. insane. Which trademark oh, is you? Due to a trademark issue, 
The Thompson Brothers brand is called something else <laughs> in the US. Come on, come on. I know this. What is it? It's helpful to be a, American right now. The Thompson Brotherhood, <laughs> B, the Redacted Brothers, or C, the Thompson Sisters. I think these, the Thompson Sisters. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I know, I saw that. <laughs> so they have just uncorked. Sorry, course. I have to mention this. Hey, so this would have been the last year of production wow. at Port Ellen Distillery. Uh, I think we produced a bit into yeah, yeah, a little bit. Older. No, but the, okay, within the last 12 months or within the last year. So what was such it? Was this is year. such a whiskey company. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, within the last 12 months of production at Port Ellen, this is Berry's own selection of 1982 Port Ellen at 55.6% ABV. It's bottled in 2007. So to me, that's 25 years yeah, old, 24, 25 years old. Absolutely. Gentlemen, I, I can't thank you enough. Yeah, That's no worries. It's wonderful. Thank no you. So, it, was, um, you it was quite <laughs> filthy when, when I opened us. it, but it's getting me a little bit kind of back to more quintessential Port mm. Ellen. Mm. I'm sure the Thompson sisters supported Slayer in the last tour, so I'm, I'm not going for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a, there's, a, there's a French comic all about up the ski journey where there's a fictional... A uh, castle and distillery that looks almost identical to Dornick Castle Hotel and Dornick Distillery, <laughs> which is run thing. by uh, two sisters. Oh, uh -huh. uh, we'll remind us tomorrow and we'll yeah. show you the comic. Oh, That's wow. Yeah, it's a friend of ours was involved. A wee bit uh, of a send up then. Yeah. Involved mm -hmm. in it. So the Thompson sisters actually do exist, but not maybe not in this context. Not but in this context. Sorry, it's what do you have to call yourself in the, in the US because of trademark conflict? Oh, uh, number B, the number Redacted B. Brothers. <laughs> number B. Redacted. Number B for me too. So well, you, if you see yourself with a bottle, this year. Mm -hmm. face with a bottle of Redacted Brothers, uh, you know, it's made, it's, or it's put together by these guys, and uh, I'm sure it's worth your dollar, hoping over the odds. Question four, which distillery's inaugural just released isn't strictly speaking an inaugural Ooh. if we get this wrong we're in trouble i told yeah. you you're, you're, you're going to get to five out of five no problem at all falkirk ballandalach strathern which the story's inaugural which is just released isn't actually strictly speaking an inaugural journey we'll let them have it wait for the countdown oh, sorry, the oh, hold your water Oh, too no. early. Sorry. <laughs> Terrific stuff. Uh, I'm going to look at this. If we, if we look over there, because you need the help, of yes, course. Yes, right? yeah. But, yeah, guys, to be fair, we have been talking, or you've yes, been talking about it for the last hour. <laughs> so Three, two, one. Of course, we uncorked it here tonight. When I put this quiz together, I hadn't decided that that was the bottle I was going to bring up. I didn't know we were going to get to drink that 10 year old. And I didn't know that you had some other special Strathairn as well. But it's been a wee bit of a theme, yeah. but it's a cool theme nonetheless. We could just pull Strathairn night. We've got enough Strathairn. We've got enough Strathairn. <laughs> Again, one of the smallest distilleries, right? Mm -hmm. There's Strathairn the fest. Uh, there's uh, the inaugurals, mm -hmm. or at least uh, the inaugural in a single mm -hmm. cask yeah, version from them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, a picture from uh, Green Fraser, who was mentioned earlier. I pinched his to show that it was already appearing in advance. Nevertheless, I was quite impressed with that Strathairn tonight, I think. It's good. Did you get a chance to taste it? Mm -hmm. It was yes. a good wee drum, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, lovely. Yeah. yeah. It really was. And a Very really nice well. contrast between the two mm -hmm. that were on show tonight, for sure. Here's the picture question. Oh, I hate oh, the picture million. question. I love never it. gave the picture question. I, unfortunately, everyone's looking at that going feeling comfortable now. Wait, the wait. people that's got this up in the big telly will see that Bal Blair is written clearly yeah. on this wee sign here. So the question I'm going to ask you is not what distillery we are looking at. Oh, Hold your water, face. poker face. What is just out of shot below the frame of this picture? Below the frame? What is in the near ground of this picture? What is mm. there? Is it your shoes? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I like it. A, casks. B, a cooling pond. Or C, a flower garden. That's pretty rough for no yeah. it's it's What is it just out of shot? At your feet, I guess, as, as Phil says, not your shoes. <laughs> Who said a dead bird? Who said that? <laughs> Daniel Williams. That I was like, that's spring pink. Could that's be. It. You wouldn't <laughs> be wrong, spring. Daniel. So you could take a point back. Can we can prove it. Is, there is are that, either casks just out of shot to the bottom of this casks? shot, or there's a cooling pond. Or there's a flower garden. What is there? 
technology of a whiskey crowd. And here's how knowledge you you'll see where they are as we roll into the hard ones. It's going to be hard for you to get to the end of tonight with a 10 out of 10. You're yeah, doing well. Doing all right, yeah. Nobody's slipped up. Everyone's in five out of five so far. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, I dropped a point on the hard bag. I, I only Ooh. went for C. No, I think you... No, that's still oh, a point. Okay. You don't need to get both. Right. You just it's get a point. So one, you get all. It's fine. You're still on five out of five, absolutely. Okay, after three, two, one, what's just out of shot? Everyone thinks that we have casks out of shot. Unfortunately, it is... Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's the famous <laughs> casks, white painted, valve layer, initials all across. It's a roundabout there, I think, you drive around it. Uh, all the Rosses, you get to meet all the Rosses when you go there. Julie, Rosses. Julie is fantastic. Uh, just an incredible distillery to go and visit. Um, not far from here. Very close. Going to get tricky from here on in. Good luck. Question six. Which list of distilleries have all released an expression called triple cancel? Oh, banana skin here. I'm going to give you three lists of whiskies. There'll be three distilleries in every list. And I'm asking you, which list of three distilleries have all released an expression called triple cask? Interesting. Go for it. Mm. Am I right to say this is quite a little bit fishy? Yeah. I was finding it very fishy, mm. like like cod liver oil mm. and yeah. smoked salmon and stuff. Because the, the only Port Islands, I've, again, I've had the privilege of trying have been quite leathery, almost like that kind of liquid leather. Kind of vibe from them, and this is so different. It's very You'll forgive us for yeah, getting so distracted, extra distracted by yeah. Portellan, right? Sorry, A. Balveni, oh. Glenmorangie, and Colhoman all have released a triple cask. B. Aberlour, Indri, and Ardbeg all have released a triple cask. Or C. Benriac, McAllen, oh, no. and Pedrada oh, no. all released a triple cask. Confidence oh. in, in <laughs> film. I think I think I know this. The fuddlement in Simon. I think, I'm, I'm going, I think that yeah, I think Bex this is, wrong. is fine to lean on the crowd, wrong. whether it's the local crowd I'm or the distant crowd. I think that there's a couple I, I, of them. I'm, I'm not looking at the screen. I'm holding myself to yeah, a standard. Yeah, so am I. I'm trying to yeah, holding myself, myself to a standard. Away. I'm, I'm gonna, not looking at it. I'm, I'm seriously nervous. I'm well, a 60 percent. What two of them is not two? Is the maybe two of them are in here? Oh, I think I've got the banana skin, but I'm going for this. Yeah, I'm going in. Okay. This is when I make okay. enemies from everyone and I lose mm. Patreon support. I'm not sure that the edge of the viewership goes down. Yeah, that's the one I'm not sure about. Yeah. They've done so much, they must have yeah. done it at some point. It's the edge of their mm. thing being about. Yeah. If the edge of their hand. That's then. the banana peel. Yeah. Mm. Well, I'm going with the enemy. Yeah, me too. Everyone in three, two, one. Oh, we're all on the same page. Oh, we're all on the same page. Are we all wrong? Oh, you're wrong? It's got to be Edgerdower. If Edgerdower has... When Riak has had a triple cast. Yeah. McAllen definitely has had a triple cast. Mm -hmm. Edgerdower has not. Oh, oh, you friend. knew! Uh, Aberlour has had a triple cast. Still has a triple cast. Indri has a three wood. But the duty free is a triple cast. Arbeg oh. does not have a triple cast. Oh. Balveni triple cast, 16 year old, 12 year old, Glenmorangie just announced last week, 4% oh, oh, ABV, brand new, everybody's okay. talking about it, it's on okay. Dram Face, if you read the news on Dram Face, brand new, smart brevity, Roy, smart brevity, like I say, I'll start to lose friends when we do this kind of that thing, that is a shame, Calhoun last week, also has scam. a triple cast, fake, hey, listen, everybody's my friend when it's easy, right? But when it gets a bit tricky, when it goes and gets a bit mm -hmm. tough, uh -huh. I'm still drinking Port Royal and I'm okay. That sounds like a duty mm -hmm. Question drink. seven. What is the most recent edition of Colhoman's 100% Isla release? Oh, I don't know. Not been keeping up. Not been keeping up. Not been keeping up. That's really good. Anyone on oh. a six out of six? Wait, I'm going to play mine now because I don't know. That's my answer. Because you don't know. <laughs> you're going to play your answer now. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I should get I mean, uh, oh. Kilhoman's 100% Isla is on the 9th edition. Oh. B, the 11th edition. Or C, the 13th edition. I think I, I, think I know this one. Yeah, I think I know this one as well. Well, I think I'm using my powers of deduction to make a guess. Good. I think I know this one as well. Mm. Chris Barlow's in 5 out of 6. Have you well, loads of people going C for 13th edition mm -hmm. on this one. Five or six for Tom Lindsay. Good to see you in, Tom. How are you keeping? Oh, uh, Tom says hey, hello. Tom. Uh, I hooked up with Tom earlier this week. He's a yeah. good guy. Cool. Um, hey, that's what loses you, friends, subscribers, and Patreon. Sorry, Justin. 
<laughs> I'll, I'll hope you hang us out for a bit. The question says, says released. <laughs> the question says released. Uh, uh, I think that was the last question, Roy, maybe. What is the most uh, recent edition of Cohen's and percent Isla release? Uh, release or released? Both, so both are, are when fun. was the distillery, was it 2000? When was the distillery founded? So Three, two, go on. one. I'm hoping it's oh, oh we're going three. three. We get C's, we get C's, we get C's. Yeah. Uh, it and can't be September 2023, Cohoman released the 13th yes. okay. edition okay. of their 100% Isla. Oh, man. So there we go. Are we all still heading for night? Are we still on the chance of night? Oh. Everybody slipped up. One well, because of the banana, no. the triple no. wood Glen Morangy or whatever. I'm already down to. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's go for the uh, the Dornick triple wood. Well, we'll get... <laughs> 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 yeah. Philip triple cast. Yeah. Philip Wagner is on a seven out of seven. I'm going to try and keep my eyes out and, and see if anybody else is keeping it. Eight question eight. Which 1891 founded malt distillery's official bottle was once a flora and fauna. Are we fans of flora and fauna here? Know this. Yeah, um, we know this. this. Featuring a leaping fish motif and a 14 old age statement. Please pay attention. There's a banana here. I'm wondering whether it's a banana. 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 Which 1891 founded yeah, malt distillery's official bottle was once a flora and fauna release featuring a leaping oh, fish I'm not, motif I'm not and a 14 year old age statement. I don't know the answer to that. I remember how many. The enemies are made at Springbank when they did this, and I said I'll never do that again, and here I'm doing it again. Okay? I don't know the answer to this. So it's this a very a hard one, case. but there's so many knowledgeable people out there that just they, they just know, they seem to absorb these things, they seem to, when they see a label, they're able to remember it. All of the distilleries I'm going to bring to you right now, none of them are Diageo, but they were all genuinely legitimately once Flora and Fauna releases. Love a, Aberfeldy, B, Craig Elliche, C, Spayburn. There's banana here. Because you well, see, there's there's the obvious one to go for, for but I, I'm not going for it. A couple of clues and a question. Slow down. I'm second one. I'm se second guessing myself here with the banana skin, but I know the answer. No, you don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. You don't know. Wrong. <laughs> Am I wrong? Is this some brotherly I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell Is you. This your answer? Guys, no, my answer I'm gonna have to guess. Yeah. I don't know. Find your answer there, Simon. Ah, think right. about it. Yeah, do you see? There's a banana skin there, Mrs. Jacoby. Before the transformation, do you see? <laughs> okay, here we go. Right, hold on, hold on a minute. Give me, give me two. Hold your letter, Roy. Right, okay. Seven needs a wee bit. Of yeah, fun. this is give a guess. Give him the countdown. It's a guess. It's a guess. It's a guess. It's a guess. I'm probably wrong. Three, two, one. Oh, I don't really B, you were confident from the get-go. Oh, I knew it straight away. Yeah. You knew. I knew it. Craig Elliche, yep. Flora and Fauna. Yeah. Yep. Spayburn is the most valuable Flora and Fauna. Yeah, it doesn't. The Spayburn is the most valuable. valuable. Only Flora one of this never released. MVP. Right? MVP it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the Tom M Brady of... Uh, it's Tom Brady of Flora and Fauna. The ghost. The Messi of Flora and Fauna. No, I knew it was Craig Elliott straight away. The Leaping Fish, the 14 year old. Um, yeah, age statement. Well done. I thought so. you could have put a Brackle in there. I was thinking it was going to be Brackle. Yeah, yeah. A, a Aberfeld is a squirrel. Yes. Um, what is Spayburn again? Is it actually. Is it a it's a wee bird. It's a wee flying bird. Uh, I don't know which right. kind of bird I didn't. In fact, I can help you a wee bit here. There's a label there. So squirrel can, napkins there. Uh, got leaping uh, salmon. I could probably That's make that a bit bigger. There's the wee bird on Spayburn. There it is. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I have a real fetish for flora and fauna. I don't know what it is about. It's the aesthetic. It's a brilliant series. That's Incredible really really. series. Just, you know what we're talking about. You know, color, yeah. color of job filtration. So when, when you take much, you, you look at like the early batches of like Pity Bay, the early batches of Dal Yun and Ben Rennes, so like really, oh. really dark fattings. We went and so through so much of that stuff. In Rosebank, we used to just used to, there was came a time when Gordon McField just stopped supplying you. you were like, oh, another case of Rosebank 12, please. And it's, oh, actually, we don't have Rosebank 12 year old, I think yeah. it was. And yeah, the only right. one without they, an animal, I think. They, they were still doing the Rosebank 12 well into the early 2000s. So it was obviously not 12 year old. Uh, liquid that went in there and the same with like a little mill release that um 
there was a 12 year old little mill that Loch Lomond would have been releasing. That was obviously not 12 year old little mill, it's just like, oh, 12. Had to be, yeah, yeah that was the statement they were going to do. Back yeah. when overaging was like that Glendronic we were talking about earlier. So, we bought a case of that last. There's a guy somewhere on the internet who's done the timeline of yes, Glendronic yes. 21s and showing the shattered years, yep, shifting yeah. forward to show when it must be overaged. Yeah, so the 21 that you had earlier should have been 27 and that was last year that it could have been the last 21 that would have been full thank you for the delicious 27 year old 21 year old brand that i want the show with tonight so there we go uh, hopefully um we've still got some people hanging on philip is still hanging on to his eight out of eight mm -hmm. let's keep our fingers crossed uh, game fraser seven out of eight i have the bottle too that's a bit worrying <laughs> he's usually or and, and, and andrew one. As a snow bunting, says Andrew Butler. Wow, snow bunting. That's Andrew, amazing, Andrew. Of course Andrew. you know. Of course he knows, yes. Yeah. <sighs> there are nine so Scotch malt yeah, distilleries yeah. beginning with D. Oh, yeah. How many were founded before Dornick? Mm. How many were founded before you guys? Uh, this is another way of saying how many were founded after. A, all of them were founded before Dornick. B, all except one was founded before Dornick, or all except three were founded before Dornick. I think I know the answer to this question. I think. Are you still in full marks? Yeah. No, no, I dropped, slip uh, up I dropped one. Dropped one on, on your yeah. I think we're question. Sorry, my effing Glenmorgie question. I'm going gonna... <laughs> to... So I'm going to take a guess here as well. Yeah. It's kind of a... Mine's a guess, but it's maybe a slightly educated uh, guess. Okay. Oh, hang on. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna guess. That's what I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's slightly nine. educated guess, but that's, that's fabulous. Thank you. Well, yeah, wow. it's good. Wow. That's really great. Okay, the crowds they're coming in. Gene Kelly saying B, but not confident. I'm going to be wrong, but I can't think of any. So he's going with A. Says Andy Pierce. Good to see you, Andrew. <laughs> uh, good to see you, Gene, as well. Yeah, I know. Mikey is in B for bloody Sorry, guessing. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you, Mikey. Okay, everyone, after three, two, one. Uh, Come on. Anyway. B, B, C. B. B, 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 C, B. Am I off? Am I okay. off the pace? Let's find out. <laughs> who do you think they are, first of all? Who would you name them as? After us. My memory's gone. <laughs> I can name one, and it's done fail. Nailed it. And I can't think of any others. <sighs> All except one, oh, Dunfield. Dunfield. There you go. Dunfield is the only D distillery founded after you guys. Uh, also, maybe Dunfield's the last in the D. I don't know. Yeah. Last of the D. Not that that means anything to anyone apart from idiots like me. Anyway, well done, Phil. So you That's are clearly winning. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah. No, we're on the no. we, We've got a chance of winning. Well. Yes, I know. Yeah, yeah. and with chance of winning. Don't you ask that for but, the... To be fair. Two of them were guesses, yes. so the fact is, like, <laughs> you're, you're a, an educated nine. I'm a guessy nine. See, you're, see your facts, <laughs> nine. Oh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm on the only an eight. eight. So the concept Andrew of an asset, you, you know the concept of yes. an asset. Yes. yes. It's a deliberately awkward, awful question. Not only do you need to know the answer to the question, but you need to know the multiple answers to the way that it's going to be answered. Okay. Oh, the best oh, way is just I'm normally asleep at this time. Like, I don't think I've ever done this. Sorry. I did bring my toothpicks, just in case. So in order to get Phil Thompson... To stay up to participate fully in the quiz at the end, I've got to make a four hour drive <laughs> up into the distillery <laughs> to make it happen. Exactly, but you're doing yeah. well. You're doing very well. So, somebody mentioned Dalriata, or is that the fact that it's not considered? Oh, it's not a Dalriata. No, 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 that's no, it's I'm, not just saying, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. No, no, the chat has been. No, has Dalriata been, is not included. Yes, that's fine. That's I hope fine. one day we can include Dalriata, yeah. but we currently okay. cannot. Okay. Question saying. 10. Is an asset. Oh, it's the asset. <clears throat> what is the theoretical capacity in millions of litres of pure alcohol per mm. annum of the largest of the D distilleries? It's not so even all get those D distilleries we mentioned, one is clearly head and shoulders above everyone else, and it is the largest. Mm. What is the capacity? Is it <laughs> A, the same? It's the number of in millions of litres per annum, the same as the number of island, operational island distilleries. So imagine we have 20 operational island distilleries and 20 million litres per annum. B, the same as the number of Scotch malt distilleries currently owned by Inverhouse. Or C, the same as the number of Scotch malt distilleries beginning 
with the letter. So what's the, what's the largest D? Mm. So you have to work out, this is, you have to first work out what's the largest D distillery. Sorry? I think it's Dolmen. Really? Then you have to work out how many island distilleries there are, how many distilleries are owned by Everhouse, and how many distilleries begin with B. What's their outfit? As Hattery at the plate. It's huge. Well, it's like a five ton mash, is it? Dillion, Dillwinny, Dill. Dalmore, no. Dalmore, won't be big. Dal Dalmore's not as big as you think. Philip Wagner, nine out of nine. Philip, Philip, Philip. Dalmore's big. Philip. I think Dalmore could be one of the big ones. Really? That's owned by Pernod Ricard. It was a right. rebuilt Imperial distillery okay. built yep. seven, eight years ago yeah. when they were maxing capacity out. Hmm. So that would be the one that I, I don't know what the price is. But the problem you've got here is even if you manage to work out roughly, you've then got to relate it to the other ass hattery of what the other things are. It fills me full of joy to see how seriously. I, I, I think I know. I think I can get because. Okay. Just go for it. I think that. Okay. Because in the house, it's like the productions are actually really small. Okay. So pretty small, probably pretty small. Uh, no, 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 no. See, read, read, no. read. So that's the but number of Scotch malt them. distilleries owned by Inverhouse. So that's Scotch malt distilleries. So the actual number of Nothing distilleries. Not the capacity. Not the capacity. Then, yeah, the number of distilleries. In oh, thousands of, or God. Millions of liters per oh. year. This is such a shithead question. Yeah, of course. Well, we could start to call it shithead, but it's, it's, it's known as the asshat. <laughs> well, uh, how many does it, the Scottish smoke distilleries at the beginning would be? Balbuir, then Mulvaney, then Romick, then Romick, then Moore, then Nevis. That's got to be the, the highest number. So Ballon Dalek now. Oh, oh Ballon Dalek. So we have 6 million out for you. Sorry, Bob. Oh, sorry. No, if you think about it, the number yeah. of distilleries you're talking about. So I like yeah. distilleries you're talking about nine. nine, nine million. Yeah. I think that's a no. I yeah, that's it has, it has, it has to be. I, has to I, be I see you would know because Bob Blair would be mm. Colton Lee, Spaber, and of course, which counts as 10, clearly. I love the Colton Lee, yeah. Bob Blair, Anno, oh. Spaber. Oh. So I reckon it could be. Bob oh, in the, sorry, a million litres of alcohol. Oh, sorry, I'm totally oh, misread the question. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and Bob Lee. So uh, if I, it's, the, the bottom two answers are five or s five or is it as high as nine? Would it be as high I, as I nine? Think, yeah. Yeah. Nine? Could it be as high because he's got it surely? Like, would it be as high as six? What's the theory of six? Capacity? Well, think about it. I think you're, I think you're six. I think you're six or seven Dal million liters of alcohol. For which to sell we're talking about. Whiskey game. It's very yeah. appropriate, Matthew. Comes so in it's going to be running late, but sipping a Thompson Brothers Chenineck. 13 year old, the two gateways. Cheers to everyone as well. Cheers to you. I don't have anything left in the glass. Um, I think we are beyond Sevy opening. Be no, let's open it. Let's go for it. Okay, let's, okay I'll do this. I you guys. Outside, you've got the Freud Lag um, No, no, I mean, for uh, I mean, how many starting with B? No, no, what? Well, well, so the operation is. Dave Leland in the Netherlands is changing to A. So it's just fantastic. Number of operational Ailey distillers. Whiskey with Molly so Bennis in A. Tony Nelson, good to see you, Tony. Good to see you, Ben. Nicholas is A. Gabriel Welding, A. Hellswood is saying A. Chris Barlow, A. Tom Lindsay, A. He had A. Well, I'm just going for the A. Right. I think, I think they're, I think they're fine. Just hang on, just let me just get this up to the camera for people. This is a new thing. This is a very new thing. Yeah, so this, uh, I was very fortunate oh, a friend of mine a of was down in Campbelltown. So yeah. A new yeah. thing for Kilkerran's 20th year uh, is that they've very kindly uh, put three different varieties of Kilkerran into the cage. There's fresh sherry, there's, uh, which is 13 years old. There's a 14-year-old bourbon. And there is, I think, a seven-year-old heavily peated mm -hmm. are the three varieties that are in for the 20th anniversary. So this is the fresh sherry. Oh, so wow. are you guys going down to that thing? The, the 20th? Yeah. I hope so. Is that hope so. Yeah. 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 I thought we were, we're so yes. really we're trying hard to, we're trying to cook up that. There yes. we go. So we booked the B&B. So I just went and booked the stream. I was like, so I don't want to come quite yes. often. And I don't have any excuses. Oh, that's right. the biggest drama. Yes, I know, but we're going to have um, some fun with it. Let's I, go for it. I, I like the way you think, Sarah. 
I don't use okay. horse. Not be a oh, Rick Johnson, <laughs> just a wee drop. My pal Rick oh, has reminded me I've got yeah. 20 yeah. minutes to make yeah. in order to wind make this a three hour V sub. Peter Lee is saying, please say thanks to one of the guys for selecting me this last Ben Nevis. Is that Thompson Brothers shot? That's usually that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. But that's fine. Sebi doesn't do small pours. Peter Lee is saying, please say thanks to one of the guys for selecting me in the last Ben Nevis for, for the Thompson Brothers shop, Agrovite, so that Hamish Malcolm can bring it to me. A wee drama in from Graham Young saying, eh, what a fun free <laughs> you have to. to, to work. Limburg Sunny saying, Graham, I'm, you and I are going to, we're traveling over together. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. See you soon, Barflies. Okay. Can we just, it's like pulling teeth here. That is the nature of the asshat. I'm going to ask you all now, I'll get, give you a countdown. After three, two, one. I'm going. I'm going. A, B, B, B. Okay. The theoretical capacity in millions of litres per annum is 10 million litres oh. for Dalmunic. Scotch malt distillery is beginning with the letter B. Any guesses? 19. 19. Um, 19. <laughs> Scotch malt distillery is owned by Inverhouse. Five. But as some people, I mean, it's, it's not Scotch malt distillery. Some people say it could be owned by oh. now. It's not Scotch malt. Operational distilleries. Isla, 10. 10. I'd say 9, so there you go. I forgot one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Port Ellen is an open Oh, now. okay. Great. So it's yeah, 10 now. Okay. Right, okay. Let's see. I was looking for Philip. I'm going to... If, was on nine out of nine. if Philip gets this wrong... He said, well, can I see you? So, if he, okay, he's got it wrong. There he's there. So you would see, oh, got it wrong. In that case, we have a, a horrible situation here. Nobody's getting a full house 10 out of 10. So so my pal offered a my pal Frank from Pete Head, Geertz, Frank Geertz from the Netherlands, put forward a bonus question when he heard I was coming to Dorm Dormit. And he said, What about answering this? How about bragging rights? Bragging rights. You get this right. It's a full house. Reset. You've, okay. you've kicked the house out of the quiz. Are you willing to take it? You're going to take the score you have now. You're going to gamble so on the I'm bonus. Gamble, gamble, gamble. Let's do it. Is this what you could have won? Is gamble. Like gamble. Yeah. Why not? Well, okay. A bonus question coming in. Frank Peatheads. Bonus question is that Dornock is based in a barn fire station. Looks like a barn, but it's actually a fire station. This is his question. On the barn, there is a building here. In that very year, there were two other Scotch distilleries established. What is that year? On the barn. You get extra credit if you tell us what the yeah, two I distilleries. What, oh, I know what one of the distilleries is definitely. I can tell you one of them. I'm like, nervous because I did. I did. You? I did not verify this. Would you like to tell you one of the distilleries? No. The question is, what is the year? Oh, just mouth what it. Do you want the year? Oh, mouth the year. it like. Not what? Oh no, that's not right. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Frank. What, Frank, what have you Frank, done? Frank, what have you done? Sorry, Frank, what was meant to be what? Sorry, what are, you, are you mouthing the year of the distillery? Year and okay, do it again. I was looking for a distillery and I was like, that's no distillery I've ever seen. So I'm not looking. Uh, How good is this called? Anyway? So, so this is the. Is it anything to do with puffer bottles? Black bottom puffer bottles. That's the year. Right, we're, we're yeah. good. We're, we're good. Yeah. Frank, yeah. you're okay. You're good. Well, that's the this is the distillery I can think of. Yeah, there's, there's another one. Okay, fantastic. We have A, 1866 is that year, B, 1881 is that year, or C, 1810 is that year. Sorry, I'll put the mic on back to her. <laughs> <laughs> Having a clue. Uh, Frank keystone. has suggested that there, it must be a keystone or something, is it? Yeah, it's, it's a keystone. Uh, it's a keystone, okay. Um, and, and part of the distillery, there's a year on it. In that year, there were two other distilleries, but what's the year? Everybody is saying B. B, 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 1866, 1881, or 1810. After three, two, one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that one. Bragging rights snagged, bagged, and tagged. Fantastic. <laughs> Brook Laddie was founded in 1881, yes. the same year as Bunahaven. Oh, oh, 
yes. you can still see the original Buna Haven cast iron mash tun in use at the working museum that is Brickladdy. Anyway, well done everyone. You all take bragging rights home. We all go home unscathed. We've been restored from the, the quiz at the end. Thanks to our pal uh, Frank, uh, Pete Head, Frank. Thank you very much, buddy. Thanks for your bonus question. So just to celebrate the fantastic hospitality here, the gorgeous setting, the amazing story, everything that you've reached and accomplished so far, and everything that lies ahead for everything in the future. It's fantastic and it's wonderful to come see, taste, smell, and drink it. Best of luck to you. Well done, guys. Thank well, you very much. Thank you, you for letting us be part Thanks. of it for a day. Thanks for coming. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks to everyone. We'll make sure that it's less than a three hour V pub tonight. We'll let you off. All get off. I told you off. Be almost the year. <laughs> so that we can relax a wee bit more too. There was a lot of stress, there was a lot of fiddling, there was a lot of nonsense yeah, to try and make this work tonight, but we managed to make it work in order uh, for us to do it. And again, in the future, it has to work right because uh, I, I hope that you enjoy it too. I've enjoyed my time here, I've enjoyed my hospitality, I've enjoyed the story, I've enjoyed seeing it, I've enjoyed touching it and feeling it. I encourage you all to do the very, very same. On the way up here, you'll be biting your fist all the way up the A9, all the distillery names that you see on the way up. You'll hit Inverness. There's an Inverness distillery now, Olivest, is now in operation, very small distillery. Still a bigger theoretical capacity than this wee firehouse in Dornock, yeah, right yeah. enough. Travel a wee bit further north, past Glenmorangie, past, past uh, Janinic and Dalmore and Balblair and all the way up past Dornock, you can go up to Klein Leash, Eight Doors, Wolfburn, Brora, Old Pulteney, and eventually at some point you'll fall in the sea. And a new distillery up there, North Point, is now distilling, they're making their own whiskey now as well. So much to see and do up this end. I know it's a big pilgrimage for so many of you to come to Scotland, but make the effort to come into the pretty parts too and, and see what's happening. What a drive. What a drive. Yes. I'll raise this glass to remind you all that I'm looking forward to seeing you all again back next week. It'll just be a solo session for me, and then the week after, it'll be a Roddy. V pub. I'm looking forward to that. But until then, I'll raise this glass and remind you all that you're very dearly loved and I look out hanging you, hanging out with you again next week. Hey, thank you for indulging us once more. Let's raise a glass. Slanjava. Cheers, everyone. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs>